This is the Power Team America podcast, and today we've got an interview with the 57 kilo high school national champion and best lifter, Eleni Guerrero. She'll be making her debut on the U.S. national team at the Sub Junior World Championships in Romania on August 28th. She recaps her great high school Nats performance, the changes she's made since then, and looks forward to the World Championships where she'll be in a heated three way battle for the gold medal. She's one of the most impressive young lifters coming up that you need to know about. Don't forget that we're about three weeks out from the North American Championships starting on August 8th in the Cayman Islands. We're bringing a huge team with 108 Power Team America athletes. We're also about six weeks out from the Sub Junior and Junior World Championships in Romania starting August 24th, where we'll have a loaded team to compete against the world's best. Our media team will be at both competitions doing press conferences, interviews, behind the scenes coverage, and more. So be sure to subscribe on our YouTube and follow us on Instagram at powerlifting underscore America so you don't miss any of it. Show your support for the squad. Get a Powerlifting America shirt or hat from the store link below. Thank you to SBN and Alenco for the continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tests of powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure to go to powerlifting-america.com and become a member. Now let's get to this interview with the champ, Eleni Guerrero. We've got the 57 kilo high school national champion, Eleni Guerrera. And actually, I already know I butchered your name. It's not Eleni. It's Eleni. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> it's Eleni, right? Yeah. And how do you pronounce your last name? Guerrera. Guerrera? You pronounce yeah. the T? Okay. Yeah. Okay, Guerrera. All right. Eleni Guerrera. And uh, how are you doing? How's it feel? I'm doing to be very well. Thank you. How's training going? You're, we're, we're seven weeks out right now from Sub Junior Worlds in Romania, uh, the Sub Junior World Championships. How is your training doing and uh, how are you feeling going into it? I'm feeling so far, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I, after high school nationals, I kind of had like a quick bounce back. Usually after meets, I'm like fatigued for a while and like just nothing feels good. I'm kind of like, I feel motivated, but like my body is like, no, like you shouldn't be doing this. But I had a pretty quick bounce back after and like my training was going really well. My deadlift was like spiking up because I had just come back from like an injury and I think I was finally healing. And so it was feeling really good. My squats have been like pretty, no- pretty normal progression. My bench was like going up until I had to like fix it for bench depth. And then, and then it kind of hit a wall, but it's going back up for sure. Nice. Uh, so talking about bench depth, um, what, what do you mean you had to fix it? You weren't getting deep enough or d- so, did someone tell you? No. So, okay. At high school nationals, I was, you know, hitting depth fine. And then I kind of like was just like experimenting with my bench one day after high school nationals and like a wide grip felt like really good to me. And so I ended up going way too wide and to the point where I was just not hitting depth. And so like nobody had actually told me, I was just like, Oh, let's film from behind. And then I was like, "Uh Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw that post. I remember, I think I saw it on your Instagram story. You posted like the direct head, head ref kind of, angle. yeah. <laughs> You're like, hmm, this is borderline. So tell me about like, who's your coach now? Um, I'm coached by Vincent Mangione. I think that's Vincent Mangione. I don't know how to say his name. Mangione. I think he's like Italian. So, you know, (laughs) I think it's like that. But he didn't even know how to say my name. So he can't be offended. (laughs) This goes by Vin. It's all good. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I was talking to him last week and he thought my name was Alini. So Everyone does. Everyone yeah. does. Everyone yeah. calls you Eleni. Uh, so that's why it's like, it's in my head as Eleni, but it's Eleni. We yeah. got to say it a thousand times on this podcast. So everyone knows the champ's <laughs> name is Eleni. All right. <laughs> um, so did, did Vin give you feedback on your bench then as well? And what, what yeah. did you guys actually do? Because this was a big thing in Malta. We had a couple of lifters, you know, Chelsea's have it and Meg Scanlon, and they're both kind of close as far as, you know, the bench depth issue is, and they did a lot of different things and there was a lot of communications around it. Um, but yeah, what did, what did Vin say? What, what are you guys doing now? Um, Vin had just initially had me move my, my grip inward. And so like, cause I would have like my, my index finger on the ring and now like my middle or like ring is on, on the, the outer ring, like, I hadn't like max with before with before, but now I'm kind of in. And just aside from that, I moved my feet forward. I figured that helped with the leg drive. Um, and it's it's felt pretty good the last like two weeks. It took a moment to get used to, but it's definitely going back up. Yeah, I was actually just re-listening to uh Meg Scanlon's post-competition co- press conference from Malta from the World Championships. And she said it took you know, she made a lot of changes after nationals to her bench. And she said it was really just like in the last like five weeks um, that it really started clicking and it just takes more time, like more reps and stuff. So yeah. it's something that you'll, you'll continue to get awesome gains from your bench as you develop into this, this new technique and get more comfortable with it. 
yeah, it's definitely, definitely already going a little bit better. So. So, um, you mentioned Vin is your coach, Vin Maggioni. And, um, so when did you make the switch? Cause I think at high school nationals, you were, you were coached by someone else. Is that right? Huh. So, um, I'll give a little context. So yeah, like when, when I first started powerlifting, like I kind of just, I think my parents too, we all just thought of it as like a little like hobby. I'm picking it up. I was always like an athletic kid. And so I was like, Oh, like, let's do a meet for fun because I like to lift. And so my mom was like, you should probably get someone to like help guide you. And so I was at this like little commercial gym. Um, and I was, um, um, sorry. Um, <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can still hear you. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're- Sorry, you might want to cut that out. My dad, my dad was calling me. <laughs> oh no! Um, <laughs> um, sorry. Okay, so I was at a little commercial gym, and like, there's personal trainers that like are within my commercial gym, and so um, my mom was like, "Why don't you reach out to like the head and see if anybody there um, knows knows much about powerlifting?" So there was this one guy there, super awesome. He obviously got me to where I was, which was pretty far before. Um, Vin became my coach. Um, but you know, he, he was a personal trainer and at the end of the day, like I just needed someone that knew more of like, um, the game itself. Cause he, he's very intelligent on the training side and like how to get stronger or the science behind it. But I think at the end of the day, I really needed someone that knew the game knew, like when I was actually going to be competing, like the tactics and that kind of thing. Yeah. And so I had, at high school nationals is when I first met Vin. I mean, it was brief. I'm pretty sure he was the one that like took my attempts, like (laughs) my opening attempts. Um, and like (laughs) when he posted on his story, like the picture that my friend had took from the live stream of his mustache. (laughs) (laughs) I sent him that, I think. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, that was hilarious. Yeah. But we had like, we'd been mutuals on Instagram for a while, like DMing, like random stuff about training back and forth. And after high school nationals, like I remember like he was like, he was hyping me up a bit. I remember he likes, he like DM'd joy and he was like, Oh, like Eleni's different. And like, that just kind of like stuck with me. And I kind of knew for like, after that, that I, at some point, since I knew in the back of my mind, he was one of the coaches for worlds. Like I kind of wanted him to be my coach. Yeah. Um, and so I would say about maybe one or two weeks out from age group nationals. Um, I had like asked him, like, um, what do you think about like maybe being my coach um, for worlds and that kind of thing? Um, And he, he had said yes. And then I kind of just like confirmed it with my parents and stuff. Um, And then we started like a day or two after uh, age group nationals, like beginning of June. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. So you've had like a, about a month working with Vin. How's that been? It's been good. It's been really good. Um, we're just getting into some heavier weights cause we started from the bottom, you know, building up. Yeah. I mean, is it different? Does it, is it different training? Are you getting different feedback and stuff like that? Like, yeah. So like with, with my old coach, like it was basically, it was basically me making my program and him kind of like, okaying it. Okay. Like I was pretty much coaching myself. Um, and so it's definitely nice to have, like, not have to just like rely on like, kind of like what I think I should do that day or like, yeah, it's nice to just like see it on a piece of paper and I'm like, okay, I'm doing this. Yeah. So for people who don't know, um, Ven Mangioni, he's the coach. He's the, what I think on the website's listed as the raw coordinator. Yeah. Basically, he's one of the U S national team coaches for junior and sub junior worlds. He'll also be, I believe, the head coach of the juniors and sub juniors for the North American Championships in the Cayman Islands, which is coming up. It's only like five weeks out now, which is crazy. Um, and then here we, I mean, seven weeks to Junior Worlds in Romania. So, so I mean, you couldn't pick a better guy. He's going to be coaching you. He's he's going to be, you know, the the head coach for the raw juniors and sub juniors in Romania. So it'll be great that he's already seen all of your training. It's like one less 
of our athletes that he has to scout because he knows everything about you. Um, yeah. and it's been spectacular with juniors and sub juniors last year, his juniors and sub juniors did really well. That that's what really impressed, um, you know, the, the national team coaches. And that's why they brought him in as one of the national team coaches. Cause he does really good with sub juniors and juniors. Mm -hmm. Just in case we didn't make it clear right off the top, you're a sub junior, right? Yeah. And how old are you? I'm 17. So you still have one more year, is it? Yeah, because I'm born in I'm born in February, which is kind of lucky because if you're born at the end of the year, you kind of miss out yeah. on a whole nother year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. So you have one more year. So you're going to sub junior worlds and there's a good probability you'll be going back again. So you'll get to Yeah, and I saw I saw it was in Malta again next I saw, I saw it was in Malta next year. Oh, really? When did they announce that? Or I, I was just, you know, playing around on the IPF website because when I had checked a few months ago, it said like Turkey next year. Yeah, it said, Turkey. It, said, it said like yesterday or two days ago, I checked and it said Malta. And I was like, wow. See, so I heard rumors. I didn't know if it was uh, official knowledge or news, you know, uh -huh. breaking news, Power of the America podcast. You heard it here first. <laughs> We're going back to Malta next year for junior and sub junior worlds. That's amazing. The um, so getting into that, did you watch the world championships in Malta? I did. Yeah. What did you think of it? I thought there was like some spectacular performances and I thought there was a lot, honestly, a lot that I did not predict. I thought none of that was predictable whatsoever. I had did like, you know, like the King of the lifts, like, um, fantasy league thing. Yeah. How'd you do? I did terrible. <laughs> 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 I relied too much on the nominations. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Rookie mistake. Hey, that'll, that'll be a good lesson going yeah. into going championships. You gotta, what you gotta do is wait for Matt Gary to put out his picks and then just copy those. That's, that's the way that you get the best. And then he's releasing these YouTube videos um, where he's like breaking down session by session. And he mentioned several times in there, like, don't, don't pay too much attention to the nominations. Sometimes you don't know where these totals come from, you yeah. know, sometimes, especially in the, for younger lifters, they've put a lot in their total. Like for you, for instance, your last total was back in March, right? So April, it's yeah. been a minute. You've had a nice long prep, um, going in because the world, the world championships aren't until August 24th. Right. So, um, I'm guessing your nominated total is going to be like your openers probably at this point. <laughs> I hope maybe not, <laughs> maybe not for squats, but for deadlifts and bench possibly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Don't reveal too much information, by the way, as we go through this, <laughs> we don't, we don't want too many people to know what's going on. Um, but yeah, so getting back to Malta, um, cause we you know talking about how, how junior worlds will be there last year. Um, the meet director Moro who ran the competition, he just did a spectacular job and Emmanuel, the general manager of the IPF, they just, he found this great meet director together they found this all you know amazing venue and so yeah what was what was just give me your off the top like takeaway on what you thought about the world championships in malta when i had first like turned on the live stream first of all um the announcers were great i thought that was really entertaining just to listen to the announcers <laughs> um but like I remember I had briefly watched it last year because I didn't really know much about the world championships last year, but like I had seen like on IPF, like I still followed IPF. So I had seen like the link to like watch. And I just think, I think the production was better this year. Like I thought it was cool last year, but I feel like for some reason, I feel like this, like the platform felt like bigger or like the whole like venue felt bigger. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting that you say that, that it came through um, from the live stream and then like a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that we were posting on our story and stuff oh, yeah. like showing the crowd and showing like the venue before there was anything in there, like and stuff like that. And you could just see right when you walked in, you could just tell like this one was going to be different. Like the hotel was like this spectacular, like five star hotel. Mm -hmm. And then the room itself was just like it was not like any other um ballroom that I had seen before. So it was just really cool. So yeah. Um, and, and the cool thing was, was that there was a nice, really big crowd there. So they had stands set up and every, every day it was packed to the brim. Like they actually had to bring in extra seats and stuff to like on rafters on the sides and stuff. Like it was, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. So what did, what did you think about the performances? Was there anything in particular that you were looking out for? Um, there were a few that I would say like, were like my favorites. The first day I had woken up at like 7 a.m. to watch the 47s because I really like I really like Jessica and I really like Heather. Um I was I first before I mentioned anything, 
I like literally got the chills when Heather pulled her third deadlift and like yeah. literally started just like sobbing. Cause I was like, Oh my God. Like that was, that was definitely a really inspirational moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's epic. Um, it was, and it was like, there was stuff, there was, there was something on the line, mm-hmm. you know, she had to have that deadlift in order to make it onto the podium and finish third. Yeah. And that, that's like not a position that Heather Connor's really been in, mm-hmm. in the past. It's like, she's pretty much been like, like able to get the podium. Like last year, she also didn't really have that great of a day mm-hmm. and finished in second, like pretty easily, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was cool to see that like champion mentality kind of like come, come out of her, you know, cause yeah. like she kind of hasn't had to really pull that out if too, too often. So I'm really excited to see like what Heather does after this. Like, I think just talking to her the whole week, she stuck around and helped us with media stuff and just everything, you know, she's a great ambassador for the sport. Like she tries to help everyone on the team. She was loaning out her tracksuit because some people didn't get a tracksuit in time and different things like this. And she just such a great person. And, um, yeah, it was just really cool. And she's fired up. I can tell you, like, like she was basically like looking at the numbers the next day and she's like, you know, like if I had just gotten like the planned third attempt for my squat, she's like, I probably, I could have won this. Uh-huh. You know, like, so yeah. like she, she feels that fire again, for sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't have any doubts for her. So I also yeah. thought, I also thought Jessica did a fantastic job. I had actually, I had picked her to win like mm-hmm. something. And I think, I think like maybe next year, maybe sometime in the near future, she's going to be world champion. Cause she's, she's obviously she's super, she's super young still. So she's got a lot of potential. And I think, I think she had a lot in the tank too. I mean, she yeah. went nine for nine, but her third attempts didn't look crazy. So, yeah, very smart attempt selection, very strategic, like putting the pressure on Tiff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Tiff is just a monster, though. Like She's that's crazy. that's yeah. just the thing is like like Heather and Jessica both are gonna have to just put kilos on their total if they're gonna ever yeah. catch up to Tiff. Like Tiff, Tiff is crazy strong, yeah. and. Um, I don't know. She, you you know, it's like you thinking like maybe she's eventually going to move up to 52. You know, I've heard rumors and things about, you know, her, her epic like weight cuts and stuff. She didn't look, she didn't just seeing her at weigh-ins like right when she walked, she didn't look like she was like stressed out or fatigued or like had any yeah. kind of problems with weigh-ins or like, you know, sometimes you see people, they look like just like dead yeah. in the face, like from, from cutting too much. She looked like ready to roll. I was like, yeah. like, Oh, right. When I saw her, I was just like, Oh shit. Yeah. The only thing about Tiff though, is she's not, she doesn't make, um, yeah, a lot of attempts. So I think at some point, like, I think at some point, like you have to, at the end of the day, like it's making attempts when it gets close, it is about making attempts because you could miss out on 15, 20, 30 kilos from your total just for messing up attempt selection. Yeah, I think she missed one of each discipline, so six for nine, and still won though by yeah. a tra- like comfortably, comfortably won. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that's the scary part is like, what if she goes nine for nine? Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what she might be able to do? And but um, actually, it's really interesting. Like, if you if I'm I'm like going to keep plugging these Matt Gary videos. Um, he did a breakdown on the 57s, which we're talking to a superstar 57 here. So he did a breakdown on the 57s afterwards, and he kind of just went a lot of back background into the French attempt selection strategy and that they typically open kind of heavy and make small jumps. And like, that's mm-hmm. kind of there. And you see it kind of across the board with all the French lifters. Like, so that's just like a different strategy from where the, uh, most of the Americans and some of the, a lot of the other countries um, at least in the U S like we, a lot of the coaches and a lot of the coaching theory around attempt selection comes from Matt Gary back in the day. And he's all about opening with something, you know, very makeable, like a 90%, something like that. And then making, making smart jumps and then, you know, doing what you gotta do in the end, you know, to, to win, but, yeah. um, but yeah, building a total for sure. Making nine attempts, like not, not trying to like bank on your second attempts, you know, like you're planning to make your thirds. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, so all right, so we're getting to Malta. We're getting. I like how I mean, you're you're 17. Like sometimes when I talk to younger lifters, they they're not as up on what's going on in the sport and like <laughs> able to talk about like attempts. Like obviously, I'm a huge nerd for that, so that's cool. I'm so um, invested; it's like <laughs> ridiculous. That's amazing to hear. It's great. Um. So yeah, all right. Yeah, 47s was awesome. Um. Did you watch Waskar 59s or no? I did. I did. Really? I did pick him. 
I did pick him too. And so um, yeah. I'm happy he won. I, I was rooting for him to get that Sheffield total, but I know he will um, in the future. Yeah. Um, he's a good lifter. So I definitely see that in his future. I hope he gets an invite anyway. Like I just feel like, hard. yeah, yeah. Yeah. With the, with the Fedoshenko controversial, you know, the world record total, he, like yeah. he, he has a, a doping failure in the past. So it's like, even if he came, he couldn't get invited oh, to Sheffield. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of the criteria is you can have like no doping failures or whatever the, the technical phrase for it is in the past and whatnot. So it would be cool if we could get a 59s in there. Um, but you're right. If not this year, he'll lock it in next year for sure. Yeah. So that's cool. All right. What other performances were you watching? Um, of course the 57s. Cause like N- Natalie Richards is like my idol as a 57. Yeah. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really recognize her, ex- like her existence until, uh, powerlifting American national open nationals this year. Cause I mean, obviously like the Federation's fairly new. Yeah. So, and I'm pretty new to the sport. And so like yeah. I picked up on it and I like, I followed her and I was like, wow, like she's crazy. And I did. Okay. Now it sounds like my, my picks were good. Cause I did pick her too, <laughs> yeah. but, um, maybe I was just like U S biased, but I really, did, <laughs> I really did think that she was going to win. I mean, cause the nomin like nomination, she was what two kilograms behind like two or three kilograms behind, um, Jod. Is that how you say your name? I don't want to uh, say Jod, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, yeah, I just saw like Natalie's training looked really good though, from what I've seen on Instagram. So like, I was like, I think she can do it. Yeah. Did you think about hiring Steven <laughs> 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 like, oh. No, but I've uh. heard good things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, you, you knew you had your eyes set on Vin. Um, but yeah, yeah I mean, so she totaled five twelve and a half. Like, you know, what impressed you the most about her performance? Um, I mean, she's another nine for nine lifter. Um, very impressive for especially well, her and Jessica are their first worlds going nine for nine. That's pretty. That's pretty great. Um, Oscar too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought I I knew that she had so much more in her deadlift than what I had like seen on um like instagram and from like nationals and so seeing her pull like nearly 500 was really cool so yeah so what she did 501.5 um at, in nationals in austin and then jod i think did like 503 or or something i forget what it was it was like 503 503.5 something like that mm-hmm. and um and i remember talking to her after that and she was like she told me that if she had just like hit if she had not missed that third bench you know, then she would have done like, I would have ended up being like 506.5 or something like that. And so she was kind of mad that someone had like a bigger tool. And when she said that, she's like, she she said it so like casual, but it just, it came right out. It was like, it was like, yeah, I was like kind of kicking myself. I should have hit that last bench. Um, I went to 506 and then like, no one would have a bigger, I was like, that's so funny. I was like, she's spicy. Like she, she cares. Like, like she took that personally. (laughs) That's funny because like, that's so much how the way I think I'm like, you know, if I wasn't, if I didn't have a back injury, you know, like my PR was, was 380 before that I would be nominated first. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's cool. Um, yeah. What else about Natalie? Anything else? I mean, I love to sing the praises of uh, like having one lifter talk about another lifter is so cool. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Like I've listened to literally, I think every single podcast that she's been on, I think I've listened to it. I don't don't think she realizes that I'm such a big fan. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we'll have to like get a group DM going or something after this. (laughs) Uh, I actually have a podcast schedule with her, so I'll make sure to mention that, you know, Eleni is coming yes. up. <laughs> Better be watching out because Eleni is coming up. <laughs> Jeez, my dream, my dream would be getting second place to her. <laughs> hey, I mean, come to national, come to open nationals next year. We'll see. <laughs> um, but you, when you think about that, um, so, so thinking about Natalie Richards, um, did you know, do you know what she totaled in her first comp? No, I don't. She totaled 350. Uh-huh. And That's she was crazy. like, and she was like 20. Um, and she was like 20, 21. It's one of those ones with the squiggle next to it. Yeah. Um, so it's 20 or 21 years old. Um, and you total 375 at high school nationals. <laughs> That's a 16 year old, I believe. Is that I right? Know. I was, I was 17. Sorry. I'm turning again. <laughs> um, okay. So as a 17 year old. Again, yeah. The squiggle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Next. 17. Newly turned 17, February 15th. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Of course. You, you mentioned that. So, yeah. So, I mean, what does that, um, 
what does that make you think about the future? Um, when you think about a number like 512 and you you look at someone, like I said, um, Natalie, I got her open power thing, uh, 350, she totaled as a, like a 20, 21 year old. And you're already, you got 25 kilos on that as a 17 year old. That's, that's crazy. I like, I can't imagine like being like Natalie Richards, like that, like that boggles my mind. But like, then again, I always just think like, when I like hit a 315 deadlift at first, I was like, this is my peak. Like, like I'm never going to be stronger than this ever. And like, here I am now close to 405. So <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, you think 512 is in your future? If I stay in the sport long enough, I mean, who knows what could happen? Why wouldn't you stay in the sport long enough? I, I, I hope I can do this for as long as I can. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then 512 is going down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what do you think? Also, you watched uh, those nine for nine performance by Natalie. She's definitely got more in the tank, right? I mean, five twelve. Oh, for sure. I I think she has like 10, 20 more pounds on her deadlift. Like that looked so easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, she. I feel like she cruised. Like yeah. Really attempt selection, and um, that's what you get when you have really good attempt selection. Is like you build momentum throughout the day. You save energy throughout the day, you're not wasting it on super heavy openers and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Um, just like even her body language, like she was just like, so happy you could see coming off the platform and stuff. It's funny though. She's coming off the platform, like all happy and everything. When she's walking out onto the platform, she looks so locked in. She's so locked in. Like, like, I mean, and she walks around, she walks around like this, like, like she's got like a, just like a a (laughs) gangster or something. Like she's just amazing. Like it, She's different for sure. She's different. I got to post some videos of it um, that I filmed of her just because like it gives me like goosebumps to think about like she she definitely a lot of these athletes when you see them up close, like they have like they're like animals, you know, mm-hmm. like have this like animal instinct that takes over like Amanda Lawrence before she went out to try to pull um, for best lifter on her third deadlift. I mean, she was like hyping herself up so much and like talking to herself and just like, I talked to myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, was, it was amazing. It was amazing to see. I think one of the things I think too, is like for, for sub junior lifters and junior lifters like yourself, um, what's cool is that you can, it, it, for now ish, I don't even know exactly if it'll be the case again this year, but in the past two years, our open nationals are really open. Like all you need is a qualifying total. Um, you don't have to hit a certain qual. You don't, all you need is a total. You don't need to hit a certain qualifying, like a really high qualifying total. So you can just sign up and then you can be back there with Natalie and like seeing how she acts and like seeing how she goes through her day. And like, it's just different. Cause I've been in all these warm up rooms now and, um, it's the top, top level athletes are different. Like that's like, that's like convincing you see. Cause it's like, yeah, you know, like like Luella got her total for junior worlds from open nationals. Like yeah, Carolyn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she went to uh, age group though too. So, yeah, she did, um, yeah. um, but like that just sounds like it would be such a different experience to be with back with like all the people that inspire me to keep doing this sport, you know? Yeah. And I mean, this year, um, not, who knows how it's going to play out. I have no idea how the qualifying for next year's U S national teams is going to be, but obviously we know Natalie qualified for Sheffield, So if it plays out in a similar way as last year, she probably won't be at our nationals, but let's see who knows what maybe that maybe the powers that be will say you have to come to nationals if you want to go back to worlds. So we'll see, but I mean, there's other awesome 57s too, like Christina Paraki. Yeah. She's the other one who's like, so. Yeah. I follow her too. Yeah. 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 She's so amazing too. So, all right. Um, so, I mean, I just think it's really cool to, to think about like, cause I didn't know. So I just wanted to check that number from Natalie. Like when did, where did she start off? And you're, you're way ahead of that. So, um, if, if she's any kind of indication of where you could be, um, world champ, best lifter in the future. And Hey, let's not get too far ahead of it. We'll be world junior, sub junior world champ in like a couple months. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so, um, all right. What else do you think about, um, the world championships? Um, any trending topics, you know, um, yeah. What else? Um, well, one more person I want to shout okay. out to, just in case anybody's, you know, listening that I look up to, I yeah. thought, I thought, um, Megan Scanlon was really good too. I thought she was phenomenal. Did she go? I think she went nine for nine too. Didn't she? Uh, she went eight for, uh, she went eight for nine because they overturned her second bench. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah, but basically like she went nine for nine. Um, yeah, yeah. And she didn't miss anything on strength, you know, yeah. and just had a hell of a day. Um, 
so what else do you want to say about Meg Scanlon before I talk about her for 15 minutes? Cause yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember it, it was a few months ago. I got like a notification from Instagram that she followed me back and I was fangirling so hard. I think I literally DM'd her and I was like, Oh my gosh, like I am such a big fan. Like you don't understand. And I think, I think her story is really inspiring too. So I like, I've listened to her on podcasts and seen like the little SBD like video they made of her. So. Yeah. Um, her, her interview that I did like in the lead up to the world championships, I think was just like, it was one of the best ones. Um, she's so candid, she's so open and she speaks so well and she's so smart and so experienced all those things. So it's really great. Yeah. I'm actually, I don't know if this podcast will come out first, actually, probably not. Um, I'm going to be dropping her, the highlights from her post competition press conference probably tomorrow, like mm-hmm. tomorrow in real life, whenever this comes out, it'll probably be like a few days ago. Yeah. Um, but, um, it's just, oh, she did it, such a fantastic job. And she's one who has a better day when she has fun. Um, whereas like some lifters are very like, you got to be like in the zone and like, I don't feel like Natalie Richards. I don't know if I would say she's having fun. I guess she was, she seemed kind of nervous and, and everything, but, and she had that like frenzy of a thing, but Meg was like dancing. I've got to have fun too. I've got to, I've got to be like smiling at all times and just like (laughs) giving, like literally just talking out loud to myself, giving myself positive affirmations. Like I'm going to win. This is my day. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So Meg was just like super positive and um, she was in the session with Taylor. Um, Uh So so she was warming up uh, in the same rack on the same platform as Taylor. And like, obviously his day wasn't going that great. Um, yeah, he's like a completely different, he's like almost the exact opposite type of lifter than Meg. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if it was, I've only been around him one other time before and he was different then because this was at the first PA Nats and he didn't have anyone challenging him really. And it was like, just kind of going to cake walk through the day, rubber stamp his ticket to worlds in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one, I think like he knew that there was a battle on it. He, he was going to be in a, in a dog fight. Yeah. He was super locked in like diff yeah. again, so different than any other athlete that I saw the whole week. Yeah. Uh, and that's why he's, you know, who he is, but yeah. um, it was funny because it was such a contrast. Cause he was like sitting in a chair and his dad's like talking to him and um, so intense. And then Meg's over here, just like dancing like she does like these little shoulder dances and stuff like it, it was so funny <laughs> the <laughs> contrast was was crazy and obviously meg had spectacular day like huh. crazy huge performance i think she put like 17 kilos or something on her total from last year yeah a ton meddled in all all the disciplines that's really good um, yeah. which is really you know yeah one interesting thing that her husband and game day coach um who, who coaches her you know handles her and stuff is he mentioned that uh, she had this was her third world championships and she medaled in every this eight out of nine events. Dang, uh, that's impressive. So, so she medals like that's I mean she's top three, she's top three in everything and like I think of her as like a huge bencher but she's top three in everything. Every, everything not even, specialist. <laughs> not even Corolla um, yeah. medaled. I think she she finished fourth in deadlift or something like that. But she's I mean got that, a, she's got a crazy bench, doesn't she? Yeah. Huge bench, huge squat. Yeah. Like, um, but that's a little feather in your cap, right? Like mm. most consistent, like makes the podium the most, most well-rounded. Um, yeah. and yeah, anyway, I think I'm so excited to see what she does next. Like she, she's another one who's like got a ton more on her total Yeah, and, and, and training is going so good. So like with Kelly Mann, um, that's another, that's another coach. That's like a really good coach that mm-hmm. I recommend a lot of people is Kelly yeah. Mann because she's been like magic with Meg. Mm-hmm. So anyway, all right. Um, what about trending topics? I'm trying to get you to talk about something controversial. <laughs> <laughs> the jury. <laughs> <laughs> then we're both just like total fan girls over Meg the whole um, time. Yeah. Uh, we could we could talk about the jury a bit. Yeah, um, would you? I think, okay, I think there's a time and a place for a jury. Um, I think to some extent, you kind of have to trust the judges. They're there for a reason. I think there was definitely a lot of overturns to the point where it was like, are the judges even judging anymore? Like, Mm -hmm. like, I think like, okay, it's definitely makes sense how like on three white lights or three reds, you can't overturn it. That makes perfect sense. Or like, if you have one white, like, yeah, I understand. Like you could overturn it. And I think like, I think in some cases, like they were overturned for good. And I think in other cases they were overturned, like in ways I don't 
agree with. But then again, like at the end of the day, I don't see what the jury sees. I don't see what the judges see. Yeah. So it's like, I can't be one to judge. Like from my perspective, I just see like the jury overturning this, something that I'm like, Oh, but that was definitely good. But at the end of the day, I mean, I don't really know what they see. I don't know what the judges see. They're on a different angle. Like the live is like from far away. So yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. Um, we're, I'll be at a, drop the uh recap show before this one in fact um and so we talked about it quite a bit on there at length and you know gave our opinions and everything on it there's definitely something that people are talking about right like yeah. you see like that was like one of the major storylines that people took away from these world championships was just the jury is different now it's not the same as it was in south africa and it's definitely not the same as it was in sweden before that so um it's something that like, how do you approach that as an athlete going into the world championships in Romania? Um, like what Vin tells me, he's like, make your squat depth undeniable, make your bench depth undeniable, like just undeniable. That's it. Just super clean. That's the name of the game. I think going forward is just being undeniable. I think, yeah. I think you're going to have to be at the world championship level. And I think partially you're going to see like a lot of the totals aren't going to be as high as you will get at your qualifying meet and, and at your nationals. Like mm -hmm. if you, if you think that you're going to go to nationals where you're going to get mostly, you know, U S and, and national level referees, not, I, a lot of our referees are cat one and cat two IPF refs and stuff like that. But at a lot of nationals, they're not, they're just national referees. Right. And if, or if you think you can compare like what you did at a local meet, to what lifters are doing at the world championships, like being held to like these extremely strict standards. Yeah. We've all seen it like where it's like, uh, at a local meet in a federation, that's not even an international federation anyway, where this is like basically they want all their lifters, obviously, you know, to put up big totals. So it looks good. Right. I mean, it's like, yeah, like that's not going to hold up at the world championships. And, right. and I don't like when people try to say, Oh, compare their totals from like domestic, like not that it's the travel part of it. That's difficult because you can prepare for the travel, but it's just the standards, yeah. the standards yeah. are definitely way more strict. I mean, you have five jury members plus the three referees and they're all like the strictest. Yeah. So I mean, if anyone sees anything out of those eight people, they're going to bring it up and they're going to talk about it at least. And if there's any little detail that's off. Yeah. So, and then like you mentioned undeniable squat, undeniable depth on squat and bench, but also locking out the knees, locking, yeah. lean up right when you start your squat. Um, like we saw that big thing happen at Euros. Yeah. Um, so. knock, knock on wood. I haven't had an issue ever with my lockout on deadlifts. Um, I think it's cause I get, I get so excited. I think I overextend to the point where I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I get so excited. And I yeah. told, I told Vin, I said, I, well, I haven't competed very many times. I've competed like four times, but, um, of those four times, I've always gone three for three on, on deadlifts. And I am not ending that at worlds. I am not ending that. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So that's awesome. So yeah, just, I mean, I hope that the fact that people are talking about the jury will encourage lifters to adjust because that's all we can do. Like you see it in every other sport, like you play tennis, yeah. um, you know that, um, like, obviously I'm a big football guy, referees, they call the games differently certain times, you know, yeah. and, and sometimes um, like the NFL will make a point to change the way they're calling certain rules and stuff like this. And they'll tell people in advance. That's the difference is that like in the NFL, if they're going to change a rule or if they're going to give clarification on a rule or something like that, they do it in advance. They give all the teams like proper notification that, Hey, this is how we're going to start calling. This is going to be different than we did in the past. So be ready for it. And then obviously as the games unfold, people got to adjust. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's just like, um, I had an issue with squat depth in my first meet. I nearly bombed out. I mean, that's, you know, first meet <laughs> that's not, un not uncommon for squat depth. Um, since then I've definitely improved, um, before Nats, I was still having trouble, like hitting depth and training sometimes. Like it was just like, it was definitely a mental thing, but recently, recently, I don't know if it was like a coaching switch. And it's like, I want to impress Vin or something, but like recently, like they have been consistently definitely hitting depth because I know Vin will tell me if it's like borderline, but he like messaged me the other day and was like, that's fantastic depth. And I was like, yes. Awesome. <laughs> just keep doing it. Keep it to the standard. I mean, we got to uphold an amazing standard. So like, speaking of that, like 
you know, there's a lot of jury overturns. There's like a lot of controversial calls. Like I think Taylor Atwood's squat, third squat was like definitely one that like people are yeah. talking about and will be talking about. Um, but then on the other hand, we got Jonathan Keiko, nine for nine, 27 white lights. Right. Yeah. Everything undeniable. Right. So right. He's I feel a phenomenal like, lifter. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if, if there's anyone to model your, you know, game day performance and like your standards on, it's Keiko. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, because everybody calls him Mr. Perfect because yeah. pretty much is. <laughs> and and he doesn't like that nickname. So we're going to start calling him <laughs> Mr. Undeniable. There you go. Uh, but yeah. Um, all right. And then what else do you think about? Um, like a lot of people mentioned the pace of the, of the competition. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you, did you get a sense of that at all? Like watching at home? Definitely. I was definitely thinking about it because I was like, I was honestly kind of panic- panicking for myself. I was like, uh oh, like this might be an issue, but I mean, you've got to adjust. Um, I'm not crazy concerned about it. It's something I have to obviously experience when I'm there. But for me, I like when I would do like SBD days with my with my like old coach. Um, we would do them within an hour. Oh, wow. so so that like, and yeah, sometimes my deadlift would suffer, but some days I would hit a deadlift PR. Yeah. And so like, you really just have to, you're like, I'm just going to have to adjust. I'm going to try to find enough time to hydrate, eat as much, like eat quick carbs as I can. Cause I think something like Natalie had mentioned was like, she didn't have much time to eat throughout. Like she had to just pop quick, quick, quick snacks and stuff. And so that's my goal. Yeah. Um, and like, it's a little different than like, I remember high school nationals, you know, like you could like, after one discipline is over, you could like kind of you know, screw around in the warm-up room, like chill out for a minute, go to the bathroom, like, right. you know, yeah. get, get ready. Like you, it wasn't like feeling like you have to go from squatting to like immediately take off your knee sleeves and start benching. Um, and yeah. that's the way it was at the world championships for sure. It was like, I mean, it was part of our, our team strategy was to like get them out of their knee sleeves, like immediately after their third squat and like yeah. immediately get them like go to the bathroom, eat and drink, whatever, and then get back here and let's start benching, you know? Yeah. Um, that's, that's definitely like, I definitely have a lot of trust, trust in Vin that he's going to like guide me to that. Well, so, yeah. um, I guess that's what, like to me, nationals, I don't believe not my session in nationals took that long. Like, I feel like I was over super fast. I feel like it went by a lot faster than meets have in the past. Cause I, like from meets I've done, there would be times where I would literally like sit in the audience after I lived yeah. for like an hour to an hour and a half. Like, I think I had like, I think I did have like 30, 40 minutes between each lift, which is like a good amount. But like, um, I think, okay, well for, um, something like Bonica had said, like, she said, like, um, I think her flight was smaller than mine. I mean, for sub junior and junior worlds, um, The thing is like, I'm combined with another weight class. Like I'm like some of the sessions were alone. Like I'm, I believe I'm combined with the 52s, um, sub juniors and there's like 10, 15 of them. And I know there's 20 of us. So. Okay. So probably a flight A and B. Yeah. 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 So I don't anticipate anything being crazy. Like, yeah. Like five people in a, in a session is not out of the ordinary. Yeah. Because here we're talking about 16 lifters, two flights of eight like super fast and like really, really fast spotting and loading, like moving the plates and just like, yeah, it was, yeah. it was wild. Um, and then I think they cut down for the Eurosport ones. They cut down the amount of time in between disciplines as well. Like normally you get a 10 minute break. And oh, I that's think weird. It was, it was like a seven minute break or something. That's it was weird. a little different in it. And there was only a handful of sessions where it was like that, but you, you felt the difference. Like those three minutes, right. like that's, you could go to the bathroom in three minutes. Like, yeah. you know, and like, so now yeah. you can't. Like for um, me, like I'm filming stuff. I'm like, I don't have time to even go change the battery in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> stuff um, like that. Yeah. I, Cause I would anticipate that they would, I mean, actually they better do this. Like they would have flight a be the 52s and flight B be the 57s or vice versa. Like, cause obviously you can't like have like flight a, a 57 finish their numbers. And then you could, that would be unfair. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, I don't um, think it would be unfair. Yeah. So from what I imagine, I would like, I would be. And since my class, I think has the most people in it out of all the sub juniors. Um, yeah. And I didn't actually anticipate that as a 57. I, <laughs> oh, well, but um, like 20 people in a flight is plenty. 
Uh, yeah, and I don't even think you can have 20. I think the maximum yeah. you can have is 14. Uh, so maybe they would do three flights, but I don't know. I mean, that would be fast, but yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Probably. Um, I, I, my guess is that they'll just have a session just for you for the 52. For the, yeah. Maybe the, they'll change it. Yeah. 20, then it'll probably be two, two of 10 or whatever, two flights of 10. Yeah. Maybe they'll change um, it. Who knows? Yeah. We'll see because like, they definitely make a lot of like little schedule changes and stuff like in the lead yeah. up, probably an announcement that'll be like final timetable. Um, but it, anything in regard, regardless of like, whether it's going to come into play in Romania or not, yeah. it's going to come into play in your future at some right. point where yeah. the competitions are fast. I think our nationals, right. um, like open nationals and stuff as well. Like they're pretty fast sessions. Like we, we made like Meg Scanlon session was pretty fast. It was basically like a primetime session with just one flight. Yeah. So, so and we want to have more and more like those kind of like primetime sessions cause they're better viewing experience. And yeah. we want to get people like to watch the sport obviously as well. Yeah, so. I definitely, yeah, I, I, I think it's something I'm just going to have to adjust to as I like, it could be troubling at times, but at the end of the day, like there's nothing I can do about it. Like, and what do you think though? Well, all you can do is like adjust, but what do you, exactly. what do you think about the like trade-off of making a product that's like more watchable versus having all the time that you need? Like, like for instance, eight, eight and eight is pretty fast, especially for the, uh, the higher weight classes. Um, but if you went to like 12 and 12, then it's basically going to take like a full hour longer to watch, you know, yeah. I mean, so what, what's your, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I'm totally biased. I would say longer times for the lifters. Cause like yeah. you watch and you have to sit and watch. I don't care. <laughs> so, so what would it, what I'm getting at though, is like, what if they said, okay, well, we'll do that for the lifter, but then now it can't be on Eurosport. And oh. where you get, like millions of people watching. Oh, it. no, no. I would rather, I would rather people watch then. Cause I think like, <laughs> I'm really excited. Like I have definitely a lot of support from like my friends and my family. Like my dad's coming with me to Romania, but my mom, my mom isn't. And my brother's just coming home. Um, he lives in LA. He's just coming home. Um, after that to be with my mom and they're like really excited to watch on the live. And like, I think that's, that's important to me. It's important that my, like that my close friends and family can watch me. So and I think for the growth of the sport, like if we're going to become a sport where you can make a living, where you, like you're in, you're in tennis, like, you know, the amount of sponsors in tennis is like insane. Right. Yeah. Crazy. You watch like the, there's like a Mercedes logo on the, on the tennis net, whatever yeah. you're watching, right? Like yeah. they have like huge, huge sponsors and tennis matches can be long on the men's side. They go five. Yeah. Five, cause they, cause five, in like the majors, they'll have the men play five sets. So they could be like. I think the longest match ever was like 11 hours long. Yeah. And it can go on forever, like with the tie breaks yeah. and all that stuff. Right. So, um, but I mean, the thing is like, eventually we want to be at that level. Where right. We have, yeah. Like, mainstream sponsors like a Mercedes and stuff like this. And in order to do that, we have to show that we can like draw an audience. So it's like, these are the trade-offs. And so I don't really, I, I, this is one of the things I have a hard time with because it's like, part of me is like, Hey, if the lifters are moving bigger weights, that's more, people are going to be more interested in watching huge numbers being thrown around yeah. but also if the whole thing takes like four or five hours like most things that you watch at one stretch are like two hours or less yeah so, um, i see and also i don't see it as like for the lifter or not for the because like the whole point of like getting it on eurosport is so that the lifters can get an audience and a platform and yeah make a living and you know get sponsorships and things like that so it's like it's all for the lifter it's just what's best for the lifter more exposure or more time to rest in between attempts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's, um, and then what did you think about the media coverage? Did you I see thought, the were doing? Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was really good. I thought it was good. Uh, the only, the only glitching session was, was Natalie's such a session for me. I don't know if it was my, my phone or if it was like, uh, a well, media it, was the Olymp- it was the Olympics YouTube. Um, yeah. was- now, that was driving me crazy because I was so invested, but other than that, I thought it was phenomenal. And then, I mean, for Sheffield too, that's a different story. That was, that was crazy. I mean, that's a whole different story. <laughs> so yeah. What do you think like in general about like the the direction the sport's going um, with all this kind of like media coverage that we have now? I think, I think the sport's going to become something a lot bigger. I, I really do. Especially with the amount of young people that I see that are like crazy, like high school nationals was like kind of an eye-opening experience. And like, just looking at the nominations for worlds, I see how many talented people there are 
around the world that like the like people that are my age are going to be the people at open worlds in 10 years or yeah. sooner than that you know what i mean yeah. yeah and so like how important is that media stuff to like to your generation i think it's super important i mean especially because like everybody's obsessed with technology so i think yeah. i think it's definitely really important to you know show it on social media people see it on their reels they get inspired that kind of thing Absolutely. Yeah. Your, your real, like, I think it blew up pretty big from, uh, from high school nationals whenever we posted that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so that stuff makes a difference. I'm, I'm happy to hear that, you know, cause we obviously we're trying to be like other mainstream sports, which have like, obviously infinitely yeah. more media coverage than we have. Yeah. Any little bit that we can do is useful things like this podcast and stuff. So, yeah. um, Okay, cool. So let's talk, uh, let's start getting into a little bit um, into like your own performances. So I've mentioned it already before that you totaled 375 kilos at high school nationals. And that was what, back in March? April 1st. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so basically, I mean, yeah, it, first of April. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 End of March, beginning of April. Um, so 375. Did you know that that 375 kilo total? It was the highest total of any 57 junior or sub junior in from high school nets, university nets, and junior and sub junior nationals. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you looked it up or, or did someone tell you? I, wa I watched the age group nets. <laughs> and so you're like, oh, okay. I see yeah. how it is. I mean, how does that? I mean, that's, that's amazing. Like you're, you're out totaling juniors um, yeah that's that's so, pretty cool yeah <laughs> and then did you know that other than jessica espinal and carolyn connor you have the highest good lift points of anyone on the junior and sub junior national team which nice. <laughs> jessica spoiler jessica's not going to junior worlds yeah uh, she told me that <laughs> she's not going to junior so worlds. there was some chance it might have been amazing but anyway but of the juniors and the sub juniors you as a sub junior 57 kilo lifter have the third highest good lift points of anyone that went to high school nationals, um, junior sub junior nationals and university nationals. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So, um, for people that don't know to qualify for junior and sub junior worlds, you can go to high school nationals, university nationals, or junior and sub junior nationals. I don't know what it'll be like in the future, but that's the way it was this year. Um, and so, <clears throat> Off the top, um, what what did you think of high school nationals and the route that you took? Um, well, first of all, uh, just before I say anything else, I high school nationals was so much better than I anticipated. Like, just not like not having to do with my performance, just the overall how it was run, like media also, like that was phenomenal. I was that that really got me hyped. I'd never been to a meet. I mean, that was my first national meet, but I'd never like like I had lower expectations and it, it was, it was run really well. I thought it was really great. Yeah. Um, I also had lower expectations, um, uh, <laughs> going to it as the media yeah. person. And I basically like flew in. I'm like, okay, I'm in Scranton. Like I, I think we just came out of like open nationals, you yeah. know? So, and then, and I also was just like, I didn't know very many of the high school lifters and a lot of the juniors and sub juniors. Cause this, it was kind of more sub junior heavy than juniors. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, especially like in terms of like people that made it onto the U S national teams and stuff like that. But yeah, like, I think it was the first day I met you and some of the other raw lifters and stuff. And it was just like, Whoa, we've got some superstars <laughs> up here in the, yeah. In the so yeah, yeah. It's super cool. Um, my prep, my prep leading up to nationals was not going to lie. Probably the worst prep I'll ever have. And like, Tell us about it. why, what happened? Oh, okay. Um, I, okay. So my sophomore year, no. Yeah. Sophomore year of high school, I played, um, varsity softball, um, freshman year as well, actually. Um, and so this year I decided I was going to play tennis because I've been playing tennis since I was very, very young. Um, I don't regret that decision much better than softball. Definitely much better for, um, my powerlifting with the time and, um, all that stuff, but either way, like, playing th two to three hours of tennis a day wasn't, wasn't great for my recovery. And 
you know, practice would be right after school. I would wake up 5 a.m. to go to the gym before school and go to school. And then I'd go straight to tennis and then I wouldn't be home until 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. I got to do homework and all that stuff. Um, and then back in February, actually on my birthday, since I've mentioned my birthday, um, I popped my back. Um, not not my uh, brightest moment, but it is what it is. It happens. What happened? Tell us. What do you mean? So that other people can learn. What did you do wrong? So um, I think the issue was just like, this is a lesson for everybody to learn. You need to warm up. You can, <laughs> you should just go into deadlifts. Um, I basically, I went into deadlifts and I wasn't lifting anything like crazy heavy. I had like a 320 uh, double or something like that. And like at the time my max was 380. So it wasn't anything like ego lifting. Like it wasn't an issue with my, I, I mean, yeah, it was definitely because I was overworked from tennis and like poor recovery, probably not eating enough, not proper hydration. Um, yeah. On my second rep went off the floor and I heard a pop in my back and I like, I could hardly walk out of the gym that day. And I went out, I went out to dinner that night, just like in pain the whole time. And I was like, I was stressing out. I was saying my parents, like, I don't think I can compete. I was six weeks out. I was like, I don't think I can compete. Like, what am I going to do? And my, my dad was like, well, I mean, you could go to that one in June. Like if like, you really can't recover. And I kind of having that in the back of my mind, like, but then again, I was really striving for this April meet because to be honest, I wanted to be done with prep in tennis. Like I wanted to be, cause they prep like exhausted. I wanted to be done pretty much as fast as possible, which is not like, which is not usual for me. Cause usually I love prepping and I love like going super heavy and stuff. But when like you just feel weak all the time, it's not the greatest experience. Um, but I mean, no part of me wanted to quit during that moment. I wasn't like, I wasn't like, oh, like, I'm not going to get up tomorrow and lift. Like I was always like, okay, we're going to try again tomorrow. It's going to be fine. And the moment I got to the platform at high school nationals, like I was ready. Like I knew that that day was going to be a good day. I felt fresh like that, that week before, um, um, my tennis coaches were super great. I like, I had told them about like nationals and I said like, is there any chance like I could just take it easy this, this week? And they were super supportive and they were like, of course. And they like, they like had me, um, sit for one of the matches. Cause I was like, the way it works, it's like, there's like one, two, three, four, like ranks on the team. So like one plays one, two plays two, et cetera. So I played two for singles and one for doubles. So it was like, I was always playing two matches every time we had a match. And so like, I had just asked them like, please, can I have like a little rest? And they were really supportive. And so that week, like the taper really saved me. Um, especially with my back too. Um, like I had failed, I think 350 or 355, maybe 10 days out from nationals and then pulled 370. Wow. Yeah. I remember your, your third poll, you were like very emotional about it. Like you were super, super super excited about it. Um, but just going back, like so you were talking, we talked before about Meg Scanlon. Um, she mentioned it in her post com press conference that she had a, a back injury five weeks out from worlds. Yeah. I saw that. It, yeah. It was so severe that she said that she thought maybe she wasn't going to come to worlds Yeah, uh, and similar kind of thing. And then she has like arguably her best performance ever. Right. Yeah. Her best performance in, in the world championships ever. Um, and so do you think that maybe like, when you get an injury like that and you're like six weeks out um, and then your main focus is just like on getting the injury healed and not, not really like pushing training super hard that it, I think partially it just means that you're going to come in super recovered. Like you're yeah. you're not going to be taxed. Like a lot of people push so hard at the end of those like last four or five weeks of prep and they're like super fatigued and like super under recovered. And then the peak doesn't go at like one week isn't enough time to dissipate all of that fatigue. Uh-huh. And so then they come in, they like, under recover, underperform. Um, I know, think, yeah, I do, think do? I was so, be- I was so beat up. Like I, I was really beat up, but that last week leading up to um, nationals, the fact that like, I got to take a little break from tennis and like, obviously the taper, like that was like, like my body was ultra recovered. I feel like, because it had like, not been that recovered in so long. And so I feel like that like really just like got me back together. And like 
the day before driving up to, to Scranton, like I was super nervous. I was super nervous, but I was like really excited. Cause like, I wasn't too stressed out about like the competition itself. I was just like, I had high standards for myself. I really wanted to PR my deadlift in comp, um, like my in comp PR, because I knew I wasn't going to be, um, my all-time PR or like tie it because of what had happened in my back. But back in December at a USAPL meet, I hit, um, 165. So like 363, I think that is. Um, and so, I mean, I only beat it by two and a half, but I know that after that I was itching for more. And I mean, I bounced back pretty quick. I think, I think I could get a good, um, PR on my deadlift at Worlds. So. That'll be awesome. Yeah. And you've had, that's the cool thing about doing the, your qualifying meet so early is that instead of just having like two and a half months to turn around, like people from age group nets only have, I think like two and a half, maybe three months, whatever, like depending on how you count it, um, until the world championships, you've had all, quite a bit more time. You've had like damn near six months, right? I feel whatever. like it's been forever since I competed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think like you're actually one who, I think we're all betting on you to hit PRs, like probably PR everything. I, I think, I think that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Don't give away any numbers though. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, I don't even so, know what I'm going to hit, so I can't even give it away. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. That's the best way to be. Um, so tell us like about your actual performance at high school nationals, like take us through the day. Um, okay. So, so, um, I got there pretty early on uh, Friday, maybe like four four or five p.m. because I was the early session on um, Saturday. I think I started at nine a.m. My weigh-in was at seven, um, and I've I've been pretty used to morning um, weigh-ins. I feel like that's always how it's been for me. At my meet in December, I think I competed at like three p.m. That was the latest I have. I'm a little later at Worlds, but. I'm not too concerned about that because making weight's not been an issue for me um, ever. I think I weighed in like like five pounds in light at, at nationals. Yeah, fifty four point six. You weighed in in the fifty seven yeah. class. So yeah, you you're good. Yeah, um, I was joking. I was joking with my. I so say you know Chelsea. <laughs> hey. um, Chelsea Anamore, also a sub junior superstar. Yeah. Um, one, of um, the, one of the other stars on this like stacked sub junior worlds team. Yeah. Um, I was, I made a joke to her the other day because I had just come back from a camp and I weighed like super light and I was like, your newest 52. <laughs> <laughs> you do the um, Evie move. <laughs> um, but no, no, no. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I even, what were we even talking about? We're talking about, um, your performance. So you got oh, there, yeah. you, you know, weigh-ins were no problem, everything like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I remember that night I got there, we got like, I had a uh, big bowl of pasta the night before. Um, That's always nice. I was, I did not sleep that whole night though. Uh, par partially because of nerves, but also because like there was, I don't know if there was some kind of like party downstairs or something, but the whole night I just heard like music and I just could not fall asleep. I had, um, noise cancellation headphones on and I was like sweating profusely. Maybe that's why I waited so late. Like I swear, like I sweat so much that night and it was so bad. That's wild. Uh, it didn't show like you were, you were like just a yeah. ball of energy, like in the warm up room. Like I, like it was early for me. We, we spent all night, like changing the, um, from a three platform to a, to going down to two platforms. And like, we, we worked yeah. really hard, like we were up all night and, and then uh, it was a very early morning. And th th I remember I had to like <laughs> steal some pre-workout from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and I had like many, many doses of pre-workout throughout yeah. all the high school nationals because we, it was long days and, and long nights for the, the crew, like working on the meet. So, um, yeah. but yeah, so yeah, you were all, you were, you were ready, pumped up and ready to roll in the morning. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like all of my meets before, like my first meet, my second meet, third meet, fourth meet, I have, I've pretty much had an issue sleeping the night before. Cause I'm just so fired up, but yeah. to like, when it comes to time to compete, like my adrenaline is so high, like I don't feel tired whatsoever. It's like, it's common. Yeah. So I have to pick the brains of some, some of the, you know, OGs in the game of how they handle that. Um, some of them take like sleeping medication and stuff like this the night before yeah. or things like this. there's ways, but also again, it's like, be careful with that because you don't know like, like drowsy in the morning or if there's like diuretics in there, some things are banned in comp that you wouldn't think. Um, so I don't know, honestly, but I'm sure that someone like Vin knows like what you can take the night before and be safe. 
yeah, yeah. I'll definitely talk about it. But Being anyways, drowsy is not going to be a problem in the morning, like you, especially not for you. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty energetic person in general. So, yeah. uh, calm day is a whole different story. <laughs> so yeah. So um, how are how do the squats go? You hit one twenty seven point five as an opener, and you finish so, with yeah. Um, so for after my back injury, I had definitely. Um, thought about taking like smaller jumps. Cause like, especially like for deadlifts, like in the past I'd taken like seven and a half, 10 kilo jumps on deadlifts. I mean, for me, I'm pretty light. So like, that's a lot, maybe not for a 84 yeah. kilo man, man, but like, um, for me, like that's, that's a big jump, but I think I took like five kilo jumps on my squats. Maybe. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Fives. Yeah. 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 You took five. Yeah. yeah. Five and five. Yep. Yeah. But I, I was thinking about opening with 130 on squats. I'm really happy I changed to 127 and a half because I think um, 130 would have been a little too high um, for the day. Because so my PR going into that, I want to say was 305. So hitting 303 was like pretty, um, pretty good. Um, I was really happy with that. So my goal was definitely to break 300 because at my previous competition, I did two, uh, 292, uh, yeah. 135. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with my back injury, squatting was a little troubling too. Unracking the bar um, hurt my lower back. So I took squats pretty light in prep too. So like after I initially hurt my back, I basically like did like a three week taper. Like it was like, I was deadlifting 200. I was squatting 185, you know, like I had to take a break, which obviously at the end of the day, that was definitely the right move. It recovered me. So, um, yeah. But I was really happy. My opener got me a little nervous. Like I misgrooved it, but that is for some reason that I have been like that with my openers on squats. And I actually think it was something with like the rack being different, mm -hmm. um, which actually is nice now because I'm now training at a powerlifting gym. So I'm very used to the power rack, but like it was something with the power rack. I don't know why it, it was something with that, but yeah, because I I'd seen before you were training in a power rack and these are combo racks. And so like, and now I see you're on a combo. That's, yeah. that's a really big thing. I mean, Chelsea Savant mentioned it, I think in one of her press conferences that like, you know, she, she basically bought an Aleco rack for her gym that she trains at, um, just yeah. so she could train on the pad the, for her bench, you know, and just overall the rack in, in general, but yeah. especially the pad for bench is a big deal because those Aleco's. Um, she was mentioning that it pretty much knocks like five kilos off everyone or something like that. She was saying uh, one of yeah. her presentations. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely, yeah. But then when I took my second, I was like, I'm still going to go one, um, 132 and a half. I think that's safe. Like again, not, not much was on the line that day. So I was like, I'll just take it. It's fine. Um, also shout out to JJ. He handled me that day. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, he was, was a great handler. Sorry. Was Jonathan Jurowitz, right? Yeah, I don't know how to say his last name, so I'm sorry again. But yeah, yeah. AJ, um, AJ four ninety five. Yeah. Um. So he handled me that day. Um. I mean, I was one that kind of decided my numbers, but he like overlooked it, make sure it was reasonable. So, um, we approved one thirty two and a half. That moved really well. Um, I was really fired up after that. I knew I had um one thirty seven and a half. I was thinking about going one forty, but. I was like, no, let's just play it safe nine for nine day. So I took 137 and a half, which was a five kilo PR from my previous meet. Yeah. Um, um, again, which was good considering all things considering. Um, I think five kilos PR and squat would be great either way for worlds. I would be more than happy with a 2.5 kilo PR. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, squats were really good after that. I was really excited because usually squats, I mean, I think for everybody, most stressful event, um, and especially when you're dealing with an injury coming in, uh, like a back injury, like yeah. you know, an elbow or something, you're going to feel it more on bench or something, but like back, you're going to feel right away. Like, like you yeah. said, when you unrack that very first squat, you're going to kind of know, like, am I, am I back or am I not back? Yeah. So I knew, okay. It didn't hurt to unrack the bar that day, but like the injury was on my right side, kind of close to my hip and lower back. So it was like combo between the two. So um, I had like, I would get cramps there. Like even after I felt like pretty much fully recovered, I'd get cramps there. Like it wouldn't be like a sharp shooting pain. Cause like after I was injured, I would get shooting pains down my legs and like, oh, wow, it would be terrible, but it was just a little cramp. I wasn't too concerned, but like my dad had brought like his like massage thing. Oh, and nice. so I was like rolling out and all. And then 
bench was fine. Bench usually isn't crazy stressful for me. Um, also since for worlds, I'm going to have my grip back to how it was for nationals. So it shouldn't be, uh, too crazy about depth. Cause I mean, I was hitting depth super easily with the old, the old form I was doing. Um, and I think I do, I think I did two and a half kilo jumps. I think I'll, yeah. I'll definitely at like at worlds probably try to open a bit lighter just in case I get called on depth. Cause like if I open too heavy and then have to hit depth on my second fail it on strength, don't want to think about that. So definitely, um, we'll have Vin call that one for me. Um, yeah, I finished off with a 70, you know, uh, kilo bench, which was five kilo PR, right? Yeah. Um, so that was, yeah, that was good. Um, PR, five kilo PR on squat, five kilo PR on bench. You're six for six. You, I mean, feel like back injury, like who, like you didn't even, <laughs> yeah. like so yeah. Then, so then even going into deadlifts, I was like, I was nervous, but how the day was going, I kind of had like thought I put in my brain before I deadlifted. I was like, no matter what happens, I want the American record at the end of the day. That's, that's my goal. And that's my goal for worlds too. world record. Like that is the first thing I want. I told that to Vin. First thing I want is a world record deadlift. That has been my goal for as long as I've been powerlifting. Like what's a world record. Do you know? It's 163. 163. All right. Yeah. Wow. So you, you've already, you're already above that. Yeah. I was, I was joking. I was like, my American record's higher than the world record. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. So no problem. You're going to get that probably on your second attempt. Um, maybe opener. <laughs> oh, man. hello. I love that. That's good to um, hear. But so, so like there's any, you're, you're going to be the biggest deadlifter. I mean, yeah, combinations. that's uh, really nice to think about. I'll go into that after, after this. Um, so I was kind of just like, as long as I get my second attempt, which I, uh, had planned to do, um, 160, yeah. which I think I did take. Yeah. 160 was kind of what I was aiming for. Cause it wasn't the chip of the American record, but it was like, um, maybe. Okay. Actually, this is funny. The American record was like, it said, you know how it said like national record standard. Yeah. That was my standard that I did at a local meet. Oh, wow. So I was, I knew that it was like mine. It was. 157 and a half then? Yeah. It was mine that I did a local meet last July. Um, yeah, yeah. And so I had like known that that was me, but I was like lending my name to be up there. Like it doesn't count if it's not actually like me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so That's I cool. took, I took my opener pretty, like pretty light for me because like how my deadlifts were going. I think I opened with like 155, right? 155. Yep. Yeah. And I had opened with 157 and a half actually at my December meet. I took really small jumps there and I don't know why I wouldn't do that again, but, <laughs> um, um, so I did 155. I remember like just after that, like I knew like, like today was going to be a good day. So I was like, okay, let's go 160. Then 160 was what I had failed on prep. And so like, it was kind of a ballsy second attempt, but I knew I had it. So I was like, okay, let's do it. And I think one thing about myself is like, I know what my limit is mm -hmm. that day. Like I know what I can and I can't do. So when I, when I picked up 160, I was like, I know I have 165. Like I know I do. I mean, no one's sorry. 167 and a half. I know yeah. I have 167 and a half. Like I know it's coming. I think I could have had 170, but you know, play it safe. Yeah. Um, what I didn't think I would have like in the moment I was like, no, I don't have 170 after 167 and a half. I think I possibly could have had it, but yeah. I was really nervous for that third attempt. Like I was, I was a little nervous, but after that, like I was so hype. <laughs> oh yeah. You, you were so excited. I think you, after you hit your opening deadlift, you, you could tell like you, you were on and you were fired up and you were like ready yeah. to go out there and smash it. Um, yeah, you took a five kilo jump, 155 to 160, and then a seven kilo jump from 160 to 167.5. So obviously you were yeah. feeling it. You were playing cautious a little bit because you're of your back injury, but yeah. You felt good enough for a seven, seven and a half kilo jump. So that's really good data for Vin to have because, you know, you could probably then even open a little bit lighter and then make bigger jumps. And, I definitely, and I definitely prefer the, the third to be like a bigger, bigger, bigger gap between the second and third to kind of save the energy. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think like first and second, like build kilos on your total. I think third deadlift. I always, again, I know what I'm capable of that day. Like, trust me when I say that I know what I'm capable of and I know what I can and cannot do. Nice. <laughs> um, so, yeah. 
hopefully, I mean, it'll just be a matter of a number that's super comfortable to pull for the win at the world championships. And yeah. I was going to, I was going like, to get into not gonna that. Have to go, not going to have to go to that, like, you know, a limit lift where it's like, you're yeah. right at limit or anything like that and try to decide like, cause, cause obviously you don't want to miss, uh, and hopefully you'll be in a position where you just load up the exact right number, chip the world record and load yeah, up or, or tie and went on body weight. Cause apparently I'm a light 57. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So yeah. Um, I mean, how did that feel after the competition? Like you, like you won, I think you won best lifter too, which I don't think yeah. you were there to get your award or were you? No, no, no. I wasn't. I was watching it on the live in the basement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just to see, cause I knew, I knew I had it after, um, this is funny. I told Chelsea this because Chelsea and I are really good friends now. We're actually planning for her to come visit me. <laughs> um, but she like I, I told her, I was like, Chelsea, like, I got to tell you, I was watching you on the live and I was rooting against you. <laughs> you didn't meet her in person. You guys didn't actually meet at high school. No, right? no, because I left. Um, I told her, I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I was rooting against you. Like, I wanted best lifter. She's like, it's OK, because I got it at, at age group, Nat. So like. <laughs> Yo, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see. I'm going to pull it up. Cause I know that like I had already mentioned before that you had like one of the highest, I think she, she, she beat my good life score at, uh, age group. I think oh. she got 90 or something like that. Oh, is that right? Um, Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to find like this, the most recent number on this. I feel like we updated these rankings after age group. Oh, yeah. We actually, I don't think we did update these after age group, or do we? Um, <laughs> no, no, we did. I'm just looking at the wrong one. No, you still beat her. Like I mentioned before, the only people that beat you are oh. Carolyn and uh, Jessica Espinal. Oh, cool. She had an 86.81, and you had an 89.99. I had a 90.87. Oh, I'm sorry, 90. And yes, yeah, she had an 86.81. Oh, okay. So. She barely got beat by Luella's 89.99 as well. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. So at, at high school nationals, like I was so excited to get best lifter and, um, I didn't know this until like you did the podcast with, um, John, that I had like gotten best overall too. I thought that was so cool that like I beat, I beat them, the men. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, no, you, you had the highest, you had the highest up by everyone by a ways. And actually, I'm not even sure if these are updated now, to be honest. Um, maybe they're not. Um, because I know after nationals, it was crazy. Like we basically had uh, one week until we had to fly out to Malta. So maybe she did a higher number than that. I, should... I think she did 93. So for y'all watching, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to fake anybody out. Cause yes, Chelsea, exactly. my best we want to give, <laughs> give her, her uh, flowers on this. Yeah. <laughs> Just a triple check. I don't want to sell her short. Yes, exactly. Oh, you can't um, do good lift points on this. Damn it. Hold on. I got to go to open IPF. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just to confirm. We're pretty sure. 93.76. And not. so I guess <laughs> uh, throw out all of what I said before. <laughs> um, when it comes to your highest rankings, um, uh, in terms of, uh, the good lift scores and stuff like this, I'll have to like now go back and look at all those numbers. But anyway, going into sub junior and junior nationals, you were the highest ranking other than yeah. Carolyn and Jessica Espin also anyway, still an amazing accolade. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. If, if I'm, if I'm behind somebody as great as Chelsea, I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, she definitely had an awesome performance at junior nationals, uh, yeah. junior, junior nationals. And she had some struggles at high school nationals with her deadlift with an injury as well, like you, yeah. like yours as well. So, all right. So, um, just going back to high school nationals. And so you win, you win your weight class by a lot. You put up a really big total. You put up a high good lift score, which is part of the qualifying criteria for making it onto the U S national team. Mm -hmm. Um, how did it feel then to have to wait until June, you know, um, to find out if you were actually going to make the team or not? I mean, were you super confident that you're going to make it no matter what? I, I probably should have put my ego aside, but I kind of knew like I, cause I mean, I stopped the roster. There was no 57 sub juniors at age group nationals. Yeah. So I was kind of just waiting for that, like the registration to close. So like after that, there was nothing I had to worry about. Um, 
because like there was nobody competing. So it was like, yeah, why did it even matter? But the thing that I had to focus on was convincing my mom to let me go (laughs) because yeah, she like before nationals, I think nationals was like eye opening for her because before that she was like, she wasn't like against like overall, like the international travel, like the world itself. I think she was concerned about it just being in Romania. Um, like when I, when I told her that it was in Malta next year, she's like, I'm coming. I'm the parent that's coming. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, awesome. um, so but my dad, my dad was always like, no, I want to go like, let's go. And so my mom finally okayed it like a few weeks after nationals. And I was like, yes, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, so then, I mean, was there any kind of like anticipation? Like, I know that you were saying that you could like, like uh, looking back now, do you wish that you had done it any differently or would you just have done it exactly the same? Probably would have done it exactly the same. Yeah, I think so yeah. too. I mean, high school nationals was an amazing comp. Like it, it was yeah. actually like the energy was good. It was ran super well, like you said. Um, and so unless there was someone that was really going to be threatening, I'm just like, I, now I'm like pulling up the actual, uh, numbers here because I don't want to make a mistake again, but you, the junior 57s, the woman who won first place, Kelsey Scanavan, she totaled 365. Mm -hmm. So I was right when I said you had the biggest total of any of the 57s in the juniors or the sub juniors of any of the competitions. Yeah. Uh, So that's, that, that's accolade still holds. Yeah. Uh, So that's really cool. I mean, and so, yeah, you don't have any sort of like, would you have gone to junior nationals? I know during junior nationals, you were messaging me and you said like, you, you wish you were there. And like, you had, I had such bad FOMO. (laughs) No, I, I am definitely going next year. Like, cause I feel like there's so many people that I'm friends with in this sport that are juniors. So it's like, they obviously weren't going to be at high school nationals. Cause it's like, you can't, you can't really, you're not really a junior if you're going to be in high school unless you're like held back, but <laughs> yeah. or you're just right on that cusp with like a yeah. certain day. Um, because I, there were a couple of juniors there, but it was, it was, it was far yeah. in between. Yeah. So I definitely, I definitely think I'd do that one next year. I think that would be super fun, but, um, I wasn't stressed about it really at all. Like I think, uh, at the end of the day, it was a smart decision. Cause like, you know, I had longer time to recover from nationals and get into training. So, you know, it's a faster turnaround after um, age group. So. Yeah. That's the trade-off is that after age group, you're not going to have as much time for a full prep. So do you think you'll do high school nationals and then just go and hang out at, at junior nationals or what? I don't, I don't really know. I need to see, like, I need to wait for the dates to come out because and okay. see obviously what Vin says. Cause like, part of me is like, it's my last year to do high school. Like that would be super fun. And I thought it was super fun. Um, it really depends on like definitely dates of everything and stuff. And like, it's my senior year too. I got to see what's going on. So. And I think like, just like given your dominance, you can, you can go to either one and basically yeah. expect to make it onto the team. Like you, as your total is going to continue to climb. Like you said, you're already out totaling the juniors. So as a sub junior, so like you can pretty much pick whichever one you want. Yeah, um, I'm not too concerned I, about that. Yeah. I would say like breaking more power of the America podcast, breaking news. Um, it's for sure. High school national is going to be in new Orleans. I think that's so cool. I've never been to new Orleans, but you said, did you say Austin for. Age group um, or is it not confirmed? I, that is not confirmed, but rumors are, it could be in Austin. So. I think Austin would be awesome too. I, I love Texas. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but the new Orleans one, um, is going to be ran by John Burford, the head coach of the U S. Yeah. yeah. So he's a great guy. And like, he's, he's been telling me that like, basically you don't even have to rent a car or anything. Like when you, you can fly in and shuttle to the airport, like 10 minutes away and just, you know, super convenient awesome. for families and obviously a good, a good tourist destination as well. So, yeah. so who knows, you'll have your pick. Um, it won't be too pressure for you, but yeah, like, I think yeah. it makes a little more sense to go to high school just because you'll have more time to prep for worlds. And yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely talk to Vin about what he thinks when the time comes, but I'm obviously not too focused on that right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no question. No, no <laughs> doubt about it. So what are you focused on? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we've got worlds in seven and a half weeks, seven ish weeks. You know. So let's talk about that now. Um, so going into this, you're in, we mentioned before you're in the 57 kilo class. There's 19 lifters here, which makes it the biggest class 
Um, yep, it's the biggest. Usually 63s and 69s are amongst yeah. the biggest, but maybe in the sub juniors, um, this might be more common for 57 to be one of the biggest. Yeah. And you're nominated in second place behind a lifter from Singapore who is nominated with a 379. You're nominated at 375. There's another woman at 370. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Singapore, US and Kazakhstan. So how cool is that? I mean, like you're competing with people from all around the world. I think, okay, like, first of all, when I just looked at the nominations, like forget about being second or anything, like it just gives you, it just gives you chills to see your name next to your country. And then like all these other people that are also like getting this opportunity. And like, I've, I've like on Instagram, I've DM'd with like people, um, the girl that's nominated fourth. Um, she DM'd me and she was like, Hey, like we should be friends. Cause we're going to meet like at worlds. And I was like, that'd be awesome. Like I want to make, definitely want to make international friends. Cause I think that's a really special part of the sport, um, as well. Yeah. So that would be the woman from Norway. Um, yeah, right. and then there's also a Canadian lifter and a French lifter to round and then a British lifter to round out the top seven there. Um, yeah. I mean, and then New Zealand. So like, these are a lot of these are like, it's interesting because Singapore has, I think like a couple of good open, uh, classic lifters, obviously U S Kazakhstan. I don't know of like hardly any, I think um, they have, so, you know, what's interesting. The girl, um, cause I, you know, I'm a stalker, <laughs> um, yeah. the girl that's nominated third, um, she's competing in equipped three days before classic. Oh, she's doing both. Okay. So yeah, yeah. a lot of the, those countries like Eastern, like Eastern Ukraine, Germany, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're big on equipped. And so um, like we see someone like Agata from Poland, um, right. who does both, you know, and, uh, but yeah, but then after Kazakhstan, it's like, here's like the main countries that you always hear about at the world championship. Yeah. Like France, Canada, Britain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. New Zealand too, which like New Zealand on the women's side with Carlina and Evie, Evie yeah. they're coming up for sure. So, all right. So what are you thinking about the world championships then? So, gonna, okay. So country. I Go think, ahead. I think the top three nominations, you know, um, Singapore, U S, uh, Kazakhstan, I think anything, I think it could go any way within these three I, 10 kilos is small. It's yeah. about making attempts, attempt selection, how travel affects you, food, water. I don't know if those two are cutters. I don't know if they're not cutters. I had seen, I had seen, um, the girl from Kazakhstan was a 63 at one point. Okay. So, so that gives, and the fact that she's competing three days before, and it looks like she's a phenomenal equipped lifter. So, I mean, if I were her, I would want to solidify that win in the equipped side first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like if I, if I were her, that's, I mean, that's what I would do. Cause I mean, you want a gold medal, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, her bench is crazy though. I think it said like 90 kilos or something like that. That that's pretty crazy for yeah, 90, 90 kilos, which you and the first place lifter are both in the, in the low 70 year 70. She's 73.5. Yeah. But yeah. She's going to put on a show on bench. That's impressive. Um, that's impressive. <laughs> Um, and, um, girl from Singapore is a fantastic squat too. And so it's like, we all, we all have like the edge on one lift cause she's got squat. I've got deadlift and then third's got bench. So it's really gonna, oh. so we'll probably see all three of those world records. Um, that's a very interesting, that'd be awesome. That'd be it, awesome. It's yeah. very reminiscent of the 76s, you know, with Carlina and Jess and Agatha. Um, so cool. That's a cool storyline. Yeah. So also, so. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the first and the third, I think they're 2005s, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're the youngest. You're 2000. So, um, at first, I was really stressing, like, no, but, like, I want to win. Like, what am I going to do? Like, this girl's nominated ahead of me. It was really, like, getting to me mentally um, for the first, like, week. And then, like, I was, like, I've definitely calmed down a lot because, like, I'm kind of remembering, like, well, I still have, like, I think there's a like a very good shot. I could get first place again. It's just going to depend on what happens that day. Um, there's no really saying, I can't say right now, I'm going to definitely get first. I'm going to definitely get second. I'm going to definitely get third because I think any of those could happen. Mm -hmm. um, who knows the girl in fourth place could do something incredible. You, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I think, I, th I do think having the highest deadlift is the mo the highest advantage out of any of the three disciplines because it's yeah. last it's the and i i i will stand by this even if i don't win or even if i don't win i think it's still the biggest advantage because whatever yeah. whatever they do i could tie it i could chip it i could demolish it who knows you know 
Yeah, and you have the the ability also to chip because you're going to be well above the world record. Right, right. So, I mean, um, so for people who don't know what that means, chipping basically means instead of having to take a two and a half kilo jump, you can take a half a kilo jump. So you can really put any increment really on the bar possible within a, a half a kilo increment. Um, right. and so that enables you to put in like exactly what's necessary. And like you said, right. you can just load up to tie and then you win on body weight because there's a pro- there's some chance you'll have um, the body weight advantage as well as the right. deadlift. Um, also, um, if my session were, uh, doesn't change, my weigh-in's at uh, 3 or 3.30 Romania time. Okay. And so for people that I don't, again, knock on wood, don't have to water cut or cut or do any kind of cutting, I weigh in like consistently like between 120 and 122 when I weigh myself in the morning. And then at night, I'm still like a pound below the thing. So yeah. um, what's lucky for me is I'm not going to have to starve myself that day before or like dehydrate myself, um, especially with travel too. Like I don't have to over dehydrate myself or like I can eat regularly. Like I don't have to worry at all about really making weight. Like I plan on weighing myself like that morning so I can kind of see like gauge, like yeah, um, where I'm at. And then, yeah, I should be able to eat into the competition. So it should be okay. That's awesome. I mean, you got a lot of things, uh, playing in your favor. Uh, so like, I don't know if you've read Matt Gary's book or not, but, um, <laughs> he talks about the advantages that you have as a lifter. And like the first one is being the strongest lifter, which <laughs> probably is you. Um, <laughs> and then the second biggest advantage is being the strongest deadlifter, you know? Yeah. Um, and then after that, it's body weight, you know, okay. is, a, is a big advantage as well. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, you have a lot of things like shaping up for you. Obviously you're going to have the U S national team coaches. You're going to have your personal coach Vin there as well, who is a U.S. Yeah. national team coach. So like everything is shaping up. All signs are pointing to a Lenny <laughs> taking home a gold medal here. I hope so. At least on deadlifts. I see that in my future for sure. Definitely going to take a gold medal on deadlift. And I think you're going to take a gold medal on total. Now, have you been, have you been watching these other lifters and like, have you been looking them up and stuff? Are they so, doing- okay. This is funny. So, um, the girl that's nominated first, uh-huh. uh, I don't know what her Instagram is. I know she has Instagram, but her, I know like her, like people from Singapore, like that know her, like they follow me. And they're actually super sweet. Like I've talked to like two of them and they're super sweet. And like one yeah. of them, um, she's a 52 junior going to worlds. And she was like, she was like, um, honestly, like I'm not rooting for either. Like, I think like, it's just going to be a great battle. Like, I think it's going to be really cool. Like, I don't think she's necessarily friends with her. She just like knows her, uh-huh. but, um, she was actually super sweet about it. <laughs> That's um, cool. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what she's doing and I honestly think it's better. I don't know what she's doing. It's probably best. I mean, you, 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 you're very tapped in like for, for someone of your age, like you're extremely knowledgeable about the sport and you're like watching and you're paying attention to the sport, you know, like you're being a student of the game, which is good. Like, that's a really good sign. Obviously you're out totaling people that are juniors and stuff. And so, you know, your lifts are there. You've now hired a really good coach. Um, you've had a lot of time to prep for the world championships. You're staying healthy, right? Like Mm -hmm. you don't have the tennis workload, happening yeah. right now as well. Right. So it's over summertime. It works out for your schedule. You're still in high school. So yeah. it's just like, just all you got to do is go out there and have a fun time, like string together some lifts, let Vin worry about all the numbers and the details. Yeah. And the reports as I, and yeah. As I said, like at the end of the day, like being on the podium, getting a world record deadlift, like this is my first world championships. If yeah. I'm able to walk out of there with a silver or bronze medal and say I had a world record deadlift, that's a fantastic day. Yeah. And I'll tell you, like, I mean, just from a high level, like a lot of sub juniors and juniors, if especially like when they're self coach and they're constantly pushing all the time, they get burned out really fast. So I think having been, um, you know, pull back the reins a little bit, like me, just be patient. Like you said, like you were saying, this isn't going to be your last world championships, even as a sub junior, you have plenty of time to grow into that five 12 and a half kilo total, uh, that Natalie put up <laughs> you yeah. got like four, five years, you got like six years, yeah. whatever it is. So yeah. just be patient because it, it's the injury and you've already gone through like an injury setback. So you've learned that lesson that yeah. like, it's the only thing that can really stop you is if you, right. is if you push too hard, get too impatient and then start to have these like perennial, like injury problems and stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Vin's doing a fantastic job of kind of keeping me in check. Like yeah. Um, I, I had a 
rough week last week. I was at a camp. Um, a I medical saw program. That. Yeah. Everyone thought you broke <laughs> Sorry, your arm. Guys. I got a lot of DMs. Sorry, guys, you thought I broke my arm and leg. <laughs> Everyone John, thought that. John like DM'd like one of my like one of my friends and was yeah. like, "Did she actually break her arm?" And I was like, "No." Yeah. Blame it on Ben. He told me to post it. <laughs> That's hilarious because I got a lot of DMs. That's why I just like immediately was like reached out to you and you're like, no. So yeah, that was a yeah. really scary moment because we're like, holy shit, our superstar. Yeah. But no, like my nutrition wasn't in check. I was doing like 20 K steps a day. I had to go to the gym at like 9 PM. And so my training was pretty terrible last week. So then I decided let's take a deload this week. And it's already been super helpful. Like my bench was well, we went super well yesterday. My deadlifts went super well today. So I think, um, after this week, we're going to start building up. That's fantastic. And yeah, I mean, just don't do any more camps or anything between now and <laughs> Oh, I don't have any, I think like I have literally nothing to do between now and worlds. Like I'm just like working and then like working out and then Perfect. Yeah. seven weeks, like Cooking, just eating. Yeah. stay healthy, eat a lot. And, um, yeah, like we, you'll be ready. So yeah. just talked about the world championships. You already mentioned it, like having your name on the nominations with all these other countries and having us america with the american flag like next to your name um what does it mean to you to represent the usa and wear the red white and blue uh on the world stage i think i think that's just it's really mind-boggling because it's like as i said when i first joined the sport it was like a hobby i wasn't i wasn't thinking too much about um like going on a world stage like if you told me that a year ago i'd be like what are you talking about like and i think that that goes for pretty much anyone that's getting on the world stage, you probably didn't think you were going to get there. You can, you can think about it. You can, you can think it's a possibility, but you don't actually know until you actually like get that invite. And it's a, it's a different, like, like getting that invite was like a different like experience. I was waiting for that email. I remember the day, like Vin was like, it's coming out today. Like I was just refreshing my email. I got it when I was in the middle of deadlifting. Um, I was just, I was so excited. And I was, I texted Chelsea. I said, check your email. (laughs) Um, so yeah, I like, and especially like when I get that USA single in the mail, there's going to be tears streaming down my face. Like I just got the confirmation yesterday. I posted on my story. I saw you both. (laughs) Oh my God. I'm so excited. (laughs) So cool to see that. Like, you know, this is little things, you know, it's like you, you have a huge total, like you're amazing lifter, all this stuff. But it's like, I remember you kept saying like, I want that email invite. I want that invite. <laughs> When's the email <laughs> coming out? You know? And then, um, like you said, like ordering all of the red, white, and blue, you know, singlet and, and all the team USA gear and everything like that. And then once it r- arrives, like it all starts to kind of just build until finally you're going to be out there. You're going to be wearing it. You're going to be like, looking around in a warm-up room with people wearing singlets from all the different countries. Mm. And then eventually you'll be on the podium and it'll, they'll be playing the national anthem. It'll be amazing. I think that's the coolest thing ever, by the way. Like that's like, <laughs> um, winning for my, winning for my ego, winning for the national anthem. <laughs> that's so cool. I mean, because you, you played in other sports and stuff like in tennis in particular, like it's a very big deal to like, when you win, they play the national anthem and stuff like right. that. So that's something. And I mean, if you're into tennis, you probably paid attention to the Olympics before you're, you're an athlete. Yeah. So yeah. Like, does it, does it give you that same kind of feeling that you see when you see like Olympians out there, like, and they're all red, white, and blue track suits. And I stuff? think, yeah, I think that's so cool. I mean, especially since, since powerlifting is not in the Olympics, like we have world games, but I mean, it's not, it's not hyped up nearly as much. Um, not yet. Uh, yeah. Not yet. But, um, I, I do believe one day powerlifting is going to be in the Olympics. Uh, like you could tell me, all you want. I think one day it's going to be, I think it's going to be there. I mean, you got rock climbing in the Olympics one day, parallel things got to be in it. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, I know at the general meeting at, in Malta, they had a guy that's like, uh, I forget exactly what position he was in, but he's basically someone that's involved in the Olympics. And he was like, basically saying like powerlifting is moving up the stages necessary, doing all the right things to eventually yeah. get into the Olympics. Yeah. But yeah. So definitely film the unboxing of the singlet post. It on oh, your I will. I will. <laughs> I love those videos because it's just so cool for like, you know, young kids like yourself, like you're like getting this experience, be like on the world stage and represent your country. It's a lot of pressure for a 17 year old, but you're, you're strong. So you're up for it. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. We've talked 
I mean, is there anything else you want to say about the world championships coming up? I'm stoked. I'm ready for it. (laughs) That's awesome. Um, That's a champion mindset. Um, We we talked a lot about, you know, all of your competition history and things like this, but let's give the people a little bit into your background as well. Like, so like, where are you from? How'd you get into lifting? You kind of already mentioned it, but um, like, what other sports did you do? Like, how was your childhood growing up? Like you have like a hard work ethic. You, were you always an athlete? Um, you know, as a young child and everything. And yeah, just kind of tell us a little bit like your backstory. Okay. So first of all, I'm from Arlington, Virginia, which is like a few minutes out of DC. I've lived here my whole life, born here, lived here, never lived anywhere else. Um, so like, I've definitely always been an athletic child, like my brother too. Um, my parents always just had us in sports. Like when I was younger, I did soccer, I did softball, dance, tennis, yeah, basically like my brother too. We just always, always were playing sports. Um, but the two that I played for most of my life were softball and tennis. Um, I was super, super into softball for many years. I was on, um, this travel team starting at age eight. I quit, uh, I don't know. I didn't quit technically cause my team broke up. <laughs> um, maybe I want to say I was 15 when our team broke up, uh, 14 or 15. Um, so not, not a crazy long time ago, but we played together for years. Yeah. Um, we were the tightest group of friends. Like that was really hard to like lose that team bond that we had. Cause I would play, I would be playing with those girls since I was so young and we became like a fantastic team. We would win plenty of tournaments, like easily. We were just such a fantastic team. Um, and I loved the adrenaline of like being at the plate, um, ready to like hit the ball. I, I thought that was super fun. Um, what position did you play in the field? I was a catcher for a long time and then I played um a bit of third a little bit of outfield. Nice. Um what yeah. what uh, position in the batting order did you hit it? I hit lead off for a very long time. Okay, on my wow. travel team I was like lead off for a while and then in high school I want to say I was just, like sixth or seventh nothing crazy. <laughs> um but so then 8th grade um my high school has this thing where it's like when you're an 8th grader you can try out for uh junior varsity high school teams. Okay. Um, with your like high school that you're going to go to. So like I was in middle school, but you could try out for um like your high school team. So I tried out for junior varsity when I was in eighth grade and I made it, but then that was the year like everything shut down. It's actually crazy to think that I was an eighth grader. <laughs> but that was 2020. So young. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so that shut down like two weeks into that. Um I'll touch on tennis in a bit too, but so, um, but softball was like my main focus at the time. So, um, I was really upset because I was super excited. A lot of my friends that were on my travel team were going to my high school as well. So I was going to be playing with them too there. So I was really excited, but then it shut down. I was like very upset. I was just stuck in my house. Like I, as I said, I'm a very energetic person. Like I need to be doing something like I just can't, I can't sit at home all day. Like I'll, I'll be so anxious and bored. So I was like, okay, um, let's, let's start running. You know, um, I'd go out. It wasn't anything crazy. It was just like two to three miles, maybe four times a week, sometimes with my dad or like I'd walk with my mom. Um, nothing crazy. Your dad a runner. Yeah. I mean, he likes to run a lot. Like he'll casually be like, I just ran like six miles. I'm like, and you're, you're not, you haven't passed out yet. Does he run like marathons or anything like that? No, no, no. I mean, I feel like if he trained for one, he could, but like, um, no, but he, he, he loves to work out all in general, like all different kinds of working out. But, um, so I kind of like, I didn't love running. Cause I was just kind of like doing it to do it. And like, sadly, like, as in like an insecure, like eighth grader, I was insecure about my body image and like all that kind of stuff. So, um, that year, like, wasn't the wasn't the brightest year for me mentally either. Like I was struggling with eating and struggling with um, like just kind of accepting like what was going on in the life. Like I was a super social person, not being able to see my friends was like really hard for me. And it was just like, I was stuck at home, like in my own mindset, there was nothing that could like distract me or like, you know, get me out of that rut. I kind of like just had hit a wall. This was the um, pandemic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's rough. Like, um, you know, people, we hear about it a lot. Like I didn't experience it cause I don't have any friends that are your age. Um, but, um, it, we hear a lot about how rough the pandemic was on 
like high school and middle school age people and and the youth in general, just from the whole social aspect of like, now you're just like stuck at home and it's like, what do you do? You know? And so you channeled that energy into running. And part of the reason was it, was it just that you wanted to like get in shape? I, I wanted to, I, I like, I would look at myself in the mirror and I just like, I wasn't happy with the way I looked. So I was like, let's go exercise, you know, let's exercise a little bit more, eat a little less. That'll, that'll go well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, sadly, that's the way a lot of girls think even men too. I mean, like it's common for people our age. So, um, I, at the, so that lasted a few months, uh, like the running stage lasted a few months. Um, then I'd say after three or four months, I was like, this is not for me. Like, I hate the way I look, but this is, I can't do this. Like, this is not going to happen. So my dad has a Peloton in the basement. He was like, why don't you try biking? I was like, okay, let's try it. That was even worse. Like, no, thanks. Um, so then my brother, um, you know, he did baseball. He was kind of, he wasn't crazy into the gym at this time. He's really into it now, but he wasn't crazy into it. Um, back then, but he was like, Oh, you should try like these, like the weights, like with like, they have like these Peloton, like strength training classes. Oh, it would just be like bicep curls, like rows, like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll try this. And then like, that was the first form of exercise where I was like, okay, I actually like this. I don't have to force myself to like do this. Like I, I like this feeling like uh -huh. I wasn't, I, I was like kind of interested in it. I was like, okay, you know, I don't hate this. So I started doing it. And that, like, it was kind of an instant mind shift. Um, at this point, I would say, like, like I started doing this like winter of 2020. So I was a freshman in high school um, with online classes. So I would go, I would lift during my lunch break. I had like a lunch break from like 1130 to 1230. I would lift during that time. Um, I like, I was always super excited to like go down to my basement and do it. Like it was so casual. It was kind of an instant mind shift for me to kind of like, oh, well, if I want to get stronger, I'm going to have to eat some more. Like this isn't going to work. And I could tell, like, at that point I would look at myself in the mirror and I wouldn't think I was fat. I would be like, this is an issue. Like I'm now, I'm now clearly like underweight. Like okay. I need, I, I knew to myself, like, and I owed it to myself. I wanted to get like better. So at this time I had had a TikTok account that actually had a hundred K followers. Um, so any, anybody that knew that about me, um, you still have it. No, it got banned. Oh, damn. I'll get to that too. But, um, so the lifting account that I have on Instagram now used to be like my, like, um, recovering account. Like I would like post like positive affirmations and like people that followed it would like, were like kind of people that were like influenced by what I was posting on TikTok or whatever. So I had grown a pretty big following, um, just based off of what I was posting for like mental health awareness and like that kind of thing. So like for like my recovery and everything. So once I had a platform, I actually think some people could say like, oh, that could be like a lot of pressure for that specific issue that I was having. But I think ultimately that made a big impact on how it helped. I think it helped me a lot because I was like, I want to show these people something good. I want to show these people that somebody can get through this. So I showed it like I showed it through myself and it was like, as time went on, it got easier and easier. So then at this point, um, we were still kind of in lockdown. Like my gym was open, but my, I wasn't vaccinated yet. So my parents weren't comfortable with it and I didn't care too much. You know, I saw my basement, but that, that spring, like April, um, 2021, I got vaccinated and my parents were like, okay, like you can go to the gym. Like your brother can drive you. You guys can go together. So my brother and I would go together we wouldn't work out together together, but we would go together. And, um, that's a little commercial gym that I started at. I still go there sometimes now, but I trained for there for nationals, I'm basically up until nationals up until where I am now. Yeah. Um, so the first day I went in there, um, I didn't squat, I didn't bench, but guess what I did? I deadlifted. <laughs> so, um, the first you would never deadlifted before this. Um, oh, I would deadlift like in my basement with like this, like bar. It was like a bar that you put together. Oh my God. It would go up to like, I think it went up to like 170 though. So it wasn't like. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. So it, did you have plates and stuff or. Yeah. But we had like these like little plates that would go on like the bar. So it was like, we had a plate that was like a 45, but it was like the bar was like 30. I, I don't really know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, That's hilarious. So, to... Wow. You were deadlifting. So did you, 
when you were deadlifting in your basement with this like sketchy bar and plates and whatever, like, did you, did you think you were good at it? Did you like it? I did think I was good at it. Like that was my favorite at a point I had uh, diverted away from the strength training classes and I would literally go down there deadlift like four times a week. I would, I would like it. It's pretty calm. Like it makes sense. I would, I got to a point where like, so I think the, the way my math, like, I don't remember it exactly now, but I think it was like 160, 170 that the bar went up to. And I knew that I would be able to go to the gym soon. So like, I wasn't going to like make my parents buy new ones. I would rep it for like, like eight to 10. And then like, I'd just be like, okay, at some point it got really easy. So the first day I went into the gym, I think I was like pulling a weird, like frog stance. It wasn't even like sumo. It wasn't conventional. It was like frog stance, terrible form, but I had lifted like, like 200 something. So like low 200 is like 210, not, not quite 225. Cause I remember the first time I lifted two plates, but yeah. um, I was like, okay, like that's pretty good. And I weighed like a hundred pounds back then. So I was like, that's like basically like, like that's double my body weight. Like that's like, I felt like not everybody could do that. So I thought maybe this is something I'm good at. So I started kind of getting into that. And then I was like, okay, like I want to get my legs bigger. Let's start squatting. So I started squatting that summer, maybe like June, 2021 squats and deadlifts. I would train upper body, like shoulders and like dumbbell chest presses, but I would never, it was more a confidence thing. I didn't have the confidence to like go on a bench. Um, yeah. it was entirely a confidence thing, but, um, that like fall, maybe August, September, I, I went on a bench for the first time. Me and my friend were like, let's do it as a joke. Um, I went on it. I literally did like 55 pounds, maybe 60 pounds. Um, so like, it's always been a thing that like my bench has been behind, (laughs) like, um, just always, but throughout that summer, definitely mentally just getting so much better. When I started actually in the gym, that was also like, when I had lifted at home, I started eating more to like not lose weight. But then when I went to the gym, I really wanted to gain. Like, I was like, this is it. Like, I want to gain up. Like, I, I want to get bigger. Like, this is my goal. And as I was gaining over the summer, like I realized that I actually, I liked that feeling. Like I, I liked that feeling of feeling full, like looking at my legs and being like, Oh wow. Like I look kind of strong. So I kept going, um, that, that fall, um, I want to say I weighed like 115, like not quite 120, but, uh, like 115 ish. Cause when I first signed up for my meet, I signed up for the 52 kilo class, but then I changed it, um, to actually be a 56, which was, um, what the USAPL, yeah. you know, cause my first meet was USAPL. So then that, um, December, um, this trainer comes up to me and he's like, you're really strong. I think I was squatting like 205 or something like that. I hit like a 205, like squat PR or something. And he was like, you're really strong. Like, have you ever considered powerlifting? And I was like, no, like I haven't. He was like, maybe you should try it out. And so I started thinking to myself, I said to my mom, I thought she was going to think I was crazy actually when I told her this, but I was <laughs> like in the car on the way back from the gym. Cause like I couldn't drive back then. So she would pick me up and she would, she would take me. And I was like, mom, like, have you ever heard of powerlifting? And she was like, that would be so cool. Like, can you imagine that? And so I signed up for a meet literally, I think like a few days later, I was like, I'm just going to sign up. Cause who cares? Like she was encouraging you to do it. She yeah, thought yeah. it was cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My and whole family you- has always been super encouraging. Yeah. And when they, when the trainer, um, and your coach, you know, said like, who became your coach, like you should do powerlifting. Did you, did you know what it was or did you, did they explain? Yeah. yeah. I I knew what it was. I, I knew what it was because I would see it on social media and I would always think like, I wanted to do that. Like, I just never thought, I think I kind of just needed that little push that was like, you should do this. Like I always saw it on TikTok or like, from who, like, who, who did you see? And like, and like, they were, they weren't just people that were just like deadlifting. Like there's a lot of like deadlift, like TikTokers and stuff. It was, like, I mean, it was really them. just like Steffi Cohen and like, okay. Like, I mean, Steffi Cohen, she's like, she's all over social media. Like I would see her like, like super strong, like that kind of thing. So um, people are actually competing. Right. 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 So I, I was like, okay, you know, let's, let's, let's do it. And I kind of just like, I think I gave myself like a solid five or six months to kind of like mentally get in the zone. Um, so I signed up in December. My meet was like May 28th or something like that. Um, so I took a lot of time, which was good. Cause I needed, I needed a lot of time, but I got set for that meet. Um, 
I nearly bombed out on, on squats. I didn't, I got my third. Um, and then I got, I ended up getting a national record deadlift for USAPL at my first meet. Um, cool. yeah. Yeah. You pulled 152.5. Like, yeah, I told I've, and that was when I was conventional too. I've always just been a lover of deadlifts. So <laughs> Yeah, I know you're, you're awesome. You've, you almost have a natural talent for deadlift. Um, and maybe it was just cause it was the first thing that you liked and you were just doing it in the basement for so long sets of eight. Yeah. Um, other bar and everything. And then yeah, but can- this is, this is funny. So my first meet, um, like I had, so I told you, like I had ended up, I ended up, um, signing up for the 56 class because, um, I was like, Oh, I don't want to have to cut for my first meet. Like, I'm like, obviously given my pass, like, I don't want to have to do that. I, I woke up that day. I weighed myself and I was, I think 113 pounds. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, uh Oh, so I went in to the weigh in tent. I ate before went to weigh in tent. I wore sweatpants, my shoes, my sweatshirt, everything. I think I weighed like 120 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Yeah. And the lady was like, she was, she looked so concerned for me. I think she knew it was my first meet. Cause she was like, she's like, want to take off your, your, your stuff. And I was like, no, it's fine. <laughs> Cause you were worried about weighing too little. Yeah. Well, no, it's fine. So I, so I went on and I was like, okay. Um, and then after, after that meet, um, I did actually pack on a bit more size for my meet in July. That was my first powerlifting America meet. Cause I knew after that USAPL meet, I was like, okay, I want to switch federations. Cause I want to go to worlds. Like, cool. I, I want to go to worlds. Um, but and how did you hear about worlds? I mean, were you I would, I mean, I was, I've been, fo- Joy and I have been like mutuals on, on TikTok since I was like famous, like okay. quote unquote famous. Like obviously I'm no, I'm no Joy, no million followers, but, um, but like we were, we've been mutuals for over two years. So I saw her like going and I was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Like I want to do that. So I was like, okay, like, let's do a little powerlifting America meet, you know? Um, I want to say I weighed 118 or 119 at that meet, but actually weighed 118 or 119, like not shoes on or anything. Um, yeah. didn't before. So I kind of just naturally, I haven't, um, been, I haven't really tracked since then. I kind of naturally sit around there. Um, cause I haven't had, um, issues literally. I'm glad I haven't really had issues with like my body image or anything like that or eating anything like that. Um, cause powerlifting kind of like saved me from that. So I've wow. just kind of naturally sat around that, that weight. That's awesome. I mean, it's so good to hear that the powerlifting, like, like we've heard stories like this before as well, like, um, with eating disorder, eating, and then also body image and just general insecurity, like self-image issues, things like this. Powerlifting is, is a great cure for that. Um, because it forces you to think about just getting stronger. And when you get stronger, you just feel better, you know, like, and it's just like, it helps with all the other mental aspect of, of all those things as well. So what would you now, when you were saying like, it was getting bad, like how bad was it whenever, you know, during that summer of COVID and all that kind of stuff? Um, because you were saying that like, you kind of started to get over it once you started lifting weights. Like it was, it, it was, it was pretty bad. Like, I just like, I couldn't like, like, I couldn't go back past the mirror without like, checking my body to like, see like if I was skinny, if I was fat, like, and it would change on the day. Like, cause like obviously body dysmorphia, you're looking at yourself one day and you're like, Oh, I'm so skinny. And the next day you're like, shoot, like I'm fat as hell. Like. <laughs> and so it was more, more about the body image stuff. And then. Yeah, you were, for sure. You were... And then like the isolation didn't, didn't help. Cause it was like, I had nobody to kind of like distract me from it, you know? Was it something that you talked about with your parents? Not really. Um, they know they kind of like they my mom definitely knew because she was like, oh, like you look skinny. Like she definitely knew. Um they they know about I mean they know about it now, but like I I like mentioned it like after I started getting better because it was like when you're going through something like that, you're not proud of it. Yeah. You kind of know it's not yeah. right. Yeah. You, I didn't need anybody to tell me that it wasn't right. I knew it wasn't right. I knew I had something going on. I knew it wasn't like, oh, I'm just being healthy. I knew that. Like, I knew there was like. You were doing the running and stuff to change your appearance. Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, And then like, what would you tell people like 
that were your age that are going through that kind of stuff now? I would say, first of all, there's no point where a lot of people think like, you've got to be sick enough. You've got to um, get to a certain point, like certain unhealthy amount before you can start getting better. Um, or you got to look a certain way before you can start getting better. You like the sooner you get better, the better, because there are so many, um, luckily for me, I caught, like, I, I bounce back fast enough, but there's a lot of like health issues that can come from it that you don't realize. So the faster you bounce back from it, the better, the better it is for your overall health. And another, another thing, like you got to find something that you're passionate about because the issue with, with what happens is like, you're not passionate about like something when you have a dream to that you're not like if you have a dream to work towards you're focused on that uh-huh. you don't want to like the issue is I wasn't focused on anything I was focused on my body because there was nothing else to be focused on uh-huh. I wasn't in school because school was shut down there was nothing I could think about like I was stuck in my room you weren't doing other sports which you had been doing all right. so because I, I never had an issue with it before before the lockdown I never never thought twice about it this is really, this is really like, you know, the pandemic, um, affected people in so many different ways. And like, and in the end, it's like, it's going to be a positive thing. You're going to Romania, you've met all these people, all your friends, yeah. and kind of thing. something positive has come out of it now, but there's, yeah. there's other people who might not have ever found anything during the exactly. pandemic. Exactly. Like I say, I say to people, I say to my parents, I say to my friends, I say, look, that is something I would never, ever wish on anybody to happen. Yeah. But for my sake, I am thankful I went through what I did because it has put me to, first of all, a stronger mindset to be like, um, have a more mature mindset with it and find something that I really love. Cause as I was saying, like, I, I like tennis, I like softball, but there was nothing, nothing compares to powerlifting for me. Like there's a different thing that clicks on in my brain when I'm like about to go on the platform or just training in general, there's never a day. Like there would be days where I was like, I don't want to go to practice today. Like that sounds terrible. But like, yeah. even if I'm fatigued or anything, I'm kind of just like, no matter what, I'm going to go train and I'm going to end up feeling better at the end of it, you know? Yeah. And you were in a lucky situation where, you know, you had weights at home and stuff like this as well. Yeah. Uh, where you could t- channel that energy into something else. Um, so that's, that's really huge too, because a lot of people don't have that, you know, or, or they, they couldn't do it in the middle of the pandemic, like suddenly start a new thing. But, but yeah, powerlifting is something that we can all like, you know, train for and like even just doing body weight exercise and stuff like this. Like uh, I remember like people talking about when the pandemic first happened, like just using like bands and stuff like this to just like get through and then get back into the gym afterwards. Yeah, um, It just gives you that like thing to shoot for. So that, like you said, you stay focused on that instead of focus on, you know, whatever other things you might have in your life. Yeah whatever, whatever other problems. So, I mean, hats off also to your parents, like for having that stuff, right? Like, um, that, that sketchy bar that you're describing, I don't even know what it is. I ordered, <laughs> I ordered, I ordered the sketchy bar from Amazon. Oh, okay. But, well, thankfully they let you, you know, yeah. that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's, it, that's interesting. Um, and then like, what about, so I know like joy was talking about the, problem of like when you devote your whole life to something like softball in your case and then the pandemic kind of takes that away um and she also had the same thing with gymnastics and then she turned on another thing where you like turn on yourself and you start to like put yourself under a microscope as opposed to having this thing that you can outwardly focus on um is that the kind of thing that happened with you yeah absolutely yeah yeah just taking away those sort of like outside things that you can focus and channel energy towards yeah. What happened to the TikTok account? So uh winter of 2022, like it January, a- it just like literally like they were like, okay, minor safety, you're done. Like my account gone. Like I got like a notification. It was like your account's been permanently banned. And I was like, okay. And what was it like? What what kind of stuff were you posting on that account? It wasn't like like at that point, I was posting like lifting videos, um, like literally anything really positivity, like body positive stuff. Yeah. Like, right. Like that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't like, I mean, TikTok was banning people left and right at that time. Like it was not just me. They were banning people left and right. Like at that time, they haven't done it as much recently, but like at that time, left and right accounts were getting banned. Yeah. And so, I mean, I'm just curious because like, I haven't heard this story from you and like, I haven't, I didn't really know this like background 
Uh, and so it's like, is this something that you want to like, you know, talk about uh, more publicly, like to inspire, you know, other people to also, you know, get into a sport or find what they love. Yeah. It's like body image issues and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Like, I think I, I said at the end of the day, that's what saved me. If I didn't find powerlifting, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. Um, I'd probably still be playing softball somewhere. And I also completely fell out of love with softball. Unfortunately, after my team split up, like I, I mean, as I said, I played tennis this year, um, for my high school team. Like I just completely fell out of love with it. Um, so. And then you said like, what, what happened with tennis overall? Like, um, in, yeah, I've been what? playing, I've been playing tennis since I was five. I did team tennis, um, individual tennis. I competed competitively in tournaments and all that stuff. I went to nationals, um, when I was 14 or yeah, 14. Wow. Um, and my team got third place. I went undefeated, but my team, my team got third place, but that was super fun. Um, I kind of gave it a, a, a rest, um, for like a year and a half, um, when the pandemic started. And then after I did high school softball for two years, I was like, I'm done with this. Like, I can't do this again. Like I really hated it. So I was like, okay, let's do tennis. And I, I definitely enjoyed high school tennis this year. It was, it was really fun. And then now that you're like obsessed with powerlifting, but you're good at tennis. Um, like obviously you, with your background and everything, like can tennis be just like a fun thing for you or does it have to be? Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's totally recreational for me. Like, like I don't have so much emotional attachment to it. Like, like I don't, if I win, I win. If I lose, I lose whatever. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's good to you, you, it's good to have those kind of things. I think like you, you're wise beyond your years, by the way, like with, with the way that you talk about Thank this, you. <laughs> uh, just being brave to put it out there too, because I mean, like high school, high school age, like everyone's super insecure, like all the way through high school and into college and stuff like that. So your ability to talk about it and stuff, I mean, that's, that's really, really good. It's a really good sign as well that, you know, you're going to be healthy going forward and having that alternative thing outlet that so that you can have like stress relief that's not something that you're obsessed with like powerlifting is also really healthy to have as well and yeah. it's something that's fun it's it's it challenges you in a lot of ways like powerlifting doesn't like like yeah. agility, cardio and speed and like or, and eye yeah. coordination like things like that i didn't mention this earlier i can't believe i completely forgot this is like the main reason why I like really got to it, in it too like i got to focus on it extra so my whole team i mentioned how we broke up um we just like like coaching, like we couldn't, we didn't have a coach. So we were like, okay, like we have to split up. So there was this, there was this new team that we all tried out for, uh, like half of us made it, half of us didn't, I did not make the team. So I remember that night I got the call. I was with my friend that did make the team. And I got like an email saying like, I didn't make it. Like I was sobbing to my mother for like three hours. I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, what am I going to do? That next day I ended up going, I went to the gym and I felt instantly better. And like, honestly, not making that team, if I had made that team, that my life would also be so different because the amount of time that I got to have, because I didn't make that team, I devoted it all to lifting. So it was like, blessing in disguise, right? Like that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The moment you thought it was terrible and and it was going to be horrible. You were sobbing, like you said, and then look at you now, right? Like you wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be doing this podcast. You wouldn't be going to Romania. You wouldn't be having Ben as your coach, all this stuff. Yeah. Like Ben needs to send some flowers to the coach that rejected you from that team. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, that's amazing how there's like these little things that happen in life. Like if yeah. the pandemic didn't happen, your team might not have split apart. Yeah. Have never got into lifting. You know, I yeah. think a lot of people got in, like Meg Scanlon talks about how the pandemic basically got her back in. Um, like yeah. she he was ready to be done with it and like yeah. pandemic got her back in. Um, so it's like, it's really interesting to see how the pandemic affected people in all different kinds of ways. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, yeah. So, okay. Uh, we've been going on super long. I want to go through some quick hitters. Okay. Um, so do you have a job? Yeah, I actually have two. Um, they're both at gyms. <laughs> um, so the first one, um, I've had since last summer, it's just like, I take care of like kids when their parents like drop them off to go work out. And then like, there's also like a summer camp. So I take them to the pool and like we nice. play games and all that stuff. It's fun. And then I just got a job at Tyson's playground, which is why oh. I started going there. So it's just like the debt, like desk duty and like cleaning and that kind of stuff. So gotcha. where, uh, how far is Tyson's playground for you? Uh, about 20 minutes. Oh, not bad at all. That's awesome. Yeah. 
And then what do you study in school? Or I guess you're still in high school. So yeah, like, I'm still in high school. So the stuff you're forced to study, but I definitely want to go into um, medicine because hence that camp I did last week. Uh, um, it, I think it's all super fascinating. I don't know exactly what kind of medicine I want to go into, but like we did all sorts of cool stuff last week. Like we, 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 um, saw like real human cadavers, with like their organs and like, gross. Much, like touch like their organs. Sick. I don't like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I can never be in science. I hate all that stuff is gross. Just the, just the thought of formaldehyde, like the smell of it's so gross. Oh, it says, yeah, it does not smell great. Good for you though. Good for you. Um, that's awesome. Um, and then you already mentioned, but where'd you grow up? Arlington, Virginia. Arlington, Virginia. Um, you're training at Tyson's playground now. That's your main gym. Yeah. All right. What was the first sport you played way back when? Soccer. Yeah. That's, I think someone like yourself, that's on a lot of sports. I would have just guessed that like soccer is like one of the first yeah. ones. So or soccer. and t- No, no, no. Tennis was first. Yeah. Tennis was first. Really? Yeah. 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 Then soccer. Yeah. Wow, because tennis requires so much more coordination than soccer. So yeah. like, I feel like people can start playing soccer when they're so young. Tennis, you gotta, yeah, that's interesting. Cool. Um, so that that tennis is definitely like more cerebral, like of a sport, yeah. just from like baseline level. So that explains like you know you're super yeah. smart, you're into science, all this stuff. Um, when you're not powerlifting, what what's your idea of a good time? Um, I just I love hanging out with my friends. Um, something that's so people don't know about me. I'm like, I'm really in the choir at school. I like to sing a lot. Yeah. Wow. Nice. So, guys, so if there's any other singers on the U S national team, that'll be, <laughs> you guys do a little duets or something. A little national anthem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. You definitely just like start belting it out when you're on. <laughs> that'll be amazing. I don't, I've never seen anyone do that. People always kind of like mouth the words quietly. I'll sing it. I'll sing it at nationals next year. Don't worry. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. If, Cause, uh, what do we do this year? Band? Yeah, we had a band doing it. Yeah, exactly. We could get you to do that. Cool. It's interesting to hear about people's like quirky other skills that they have. Yeah. Um, okay. How old are you? We already got that 17. 17. Uh, do you prefer mountains or beaches or neither? Beaches, I guess. I don't really go to mountains. I've never been skiing or anything like that before. You've never been skiing? Never been to the mountains? No. Oh, oh. Uh, I don't know if they have mountains in Romania. Probably not where we're going, but. I don't know. <laughs> Um, do you have a nickname? No, a Lenny. A Lenny, a Lenny, e, Lenny. Lenny, I don't know. Yeah. Um, who's a person that you look up to in powerlifting or in strength sports? And you can name a few. I mean, yeah, we kind of we kind of went over this. Um, you got Jessica Aspinall, Megan Scanlon, Natalie Richards. Um, on the men's side, I really like Gavin, um, Jonathan Keiko, Keiko. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Amanda Lawrence. For sure. Yeah. She's awesome. Um, was it, and then you mentioned too, Steffi Cohen was like one of the first people that you saw when you first started getting into the sport. Yeah. Were there any others in that time period that you like remember from back in the day? Not really. All Steffi and then, and then joy, I guess. Oh, joy. Oh my God. I can't believe I forgot. Joy is like one of my biggest inspirations for sure. Cause she's like my age. Yeah. Yeah. No, joy's amazing. Um, she's a huge inspiration. Yeah. for something. Uh, what's your favorite sport to watch? powerlifting <laughs> <laughs> wow you're a powerlifting nerd through and through i don't do even watch a, anything else do you have a favorite football team no my dad likes the giants the giants okay yeah um, what's your favorite music genre um taylor swift <laughs> oh okay <laughs> that's a genre in and of itself um who's your favorite rapper then kanye i'm guessing <laughs> funny funny <laughs> funny uh I like Uzi. I like um, Yeet. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I'll, I'll make that notes of those for your reels and stuff from Worlds. Uh, <laughs> um, I would say who's your favorite all-time rappers, but you're so young, you probably don't have any. I like Eminem. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey, wow, you can't get much better than that. Um, what about movie movie genres? Um, I don't know. I like horror. <laughs> Or all right. And do you watch a lot of TV, Netflix, this kind of stuff? Doesn't seem like you have time for a lot. Not of really. I like like simple cartoons and stuff, like Disney cartoons and that kind of thing. Nice. That's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, it seems like I mean, I remember when you were doing tennis, weren't you like? Didn't you have to get up like crazy early? Yeah, I'd set my alarm for five. Yeah, and then like you were you lifting before you went to school and then playing yeah. tennis afterwards. Yeah. yeah, that's wild. All right. Um, last question is just um, people that you want to thank. Any sponsors? I definitely want to 
thank my parents. They're like, they support me so much. My brother, who actually has never seen me in a competition before, <laughs> but he definitely wants to. Um, they're they're my three, definitely. Like I'm super close with my family. Um, definitely want to thank my friends, like in school. Like they always seem super interested. And my my online friends, I've got a friend, shout out to Haley, who I met um in December at a USAPL meet. We're like best friends now. Shout out to Chelsea, Joy, Jessica Haggerty. Love you guys. <laughs> Haggerty, we haven't even mentioned her. She's amazing. You guys, yeah. Sub Junior's team is so stacked. Yeah. All right. Well, Eleni, um, we're going to leave it there. Um, it was awesome talking to you. This one on, I was actually, I'm surprised. Like normally younger uh, podcasts like this, they don't go on this long. To <laughs> talk about. It's you don't have fun. a long, long history and stuff like this to talk about. But yeah, no, it was awesome. You're, you're fantastic. And thank you. Really, really proud of, you know, of you and the, you're a huge inspiration. And I, I just yeah. I want you to just keep using, keep using your platform for good things, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, good luck at the world championships. Hopefully I'll Thank be there you. to uh, make reels for you in real time. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. With that, everyone that's listening to Poverty America podcast, thank you for listening and tuning in and make sure you go follow Eleni and all the sub junior and juniors that'll be going to the world championships in Romania here in just a few short weeks. And um, with that, we'll say peace out.